not happy in marriage. You go into marriage thinking, oh, I thought that as a husband you do this. As a wife. The one you choose is the revelation of your wisdom. Yes. Whether you can choose is a revelation of your wisdom. Like I, I learned about marriage from him. Whatever I do and I practice in, in marriage and in my life is from the Bible. It's from God. Oh yeah. There is a time where you have to concentrate on getting married. And not school. Focus and marry. And stop fooling. Recently I saw one of my sheep. I told, I told her, I've told her to smile. And she's not smiling. And it occurred to her to me that maybe she will not get her beloved. Because this is the advice I'm giving you. It is what I know. It changes. Hey. It changes your beauty. You become more beautiful. You become nicer. Yes. If you are beautiful up to 50%, it goes to like 80%. Person honor you. Right? You see, honor is, is, is a subset of love. Honor is a subset of love. When a man loves a lady, he honors her. When, when, if, if you are wedded, if you are taken for a wedding, th- there are some people who will marry you, but they will never do a wedding. Huh? <laughs> wedding? No way. Marry, but no wedding. And there are some people who will marry you who will not even sign anything. Yes, and there are some people who will marry you but will not even will not even do a, a engagement. They'll just do knocking. <laughs> huh? Yes. And some people will marry you without even doing knocking. Yes. Honor yourself. One day I saw a lady who had a very bad marriage. And at that time I didn't understand that a wedding is to give honor to a woman. So in the midst of the quarrels, she pestered her husband to do a wedding. Now, I was confused. Why are you trying to do a wedding for a man you are complaining about almost every day is a bad person? But why do you want the wedding? It was later that I understood. I thought that they were celebrating love. No, 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 no. This is not a celebration of love. It is the honor that is being done the lady that she wanted. So the wedding was done with the man that she she had. I mean, when you talk about a complaining person who is not happy or impressed with the husband, this was a classic case. Hey. But the wedding came on. And there she was marching. I saw her marching myself with my eyes. Marching in white. With the complete, the, with the first accused standing by her side. But it was not a celebration of love. It was an honoring her. Something she had not had. And she wanted to be honored. Anyway, I'm saying all this to say that if a man does a wedding for you, he has honored you. That's my point. You get it? And I am saying that honor is a subset of love. He honors you because he loves you. When I had a wedding, when I had 
when I did a wedding. I did it for my wife. Because she, she knows weddings. I don't know weddings. She knows all these things. She knows what it is. She knows the meaning. And I knew by that time that it was also honoring her. So I did everything that I could to make a wedding memorable. Not marriage, wedding. <laughs> there are different experiences. There are two different things. And then 10 years after being married, I did another one to honor her again. Not for me. Me, I'm not that type. I'm not that type. If, if I want to celebrate something, that's not how I would do it. You, have you ever seen me going to rent a hotel somewhere to have a party, a 40th birthday, 50th birthday? That is not my style. I, I appreciate that style, but it's not my style. I, I celebrate in another way. There are other ways of celebrating. You, you, don't, you, you don't know everything. <laughs> yes. Are you tired? Yeah. So, so what I'm saying is that the wedding is an honor done to you or done you. And you must accept it. So I'm saying that honor is a subset of love. Like when you love somebody, part of the things you do to the person is honor and even respect. It's just like loyalty. People think that loyalty is um, like some rules that you, are, you follow. If you don't, you, you, you'll be cursed. No. Loyalty is a subset of love. Yes. It's a subset of love. If you love someone, you'll be faithful to her or him. Are you there? Yes. yes. So, both for honor and loyalty, they are subsets of love, which is the big thing when it comes to serving God. Love, God is love. And everything about God is love. So, all these things, when you mention loyalty or honor, they are subsets of love. And so when people are deeply in love, they say, I'll be faithful to you to the end. Let, let only death separate us. Hey! But when the love is low, oh, you're not thinking about dying. You're thinking about something else. So, love is the basis for honor. Do you see? Yeah. Marriage also is like that. Sometimes you have a good chance. Somebody good comes to you. But you don't know the difference between good and bad. You don't know the difference between... There are different types of brothers. We have good brothers who are first of all faithful. There are brothers who can't be faithful. They can't. They can't. It's true. Yes. You must know that. The people are not the same. Because sometimes of the background or what they have tasted it's very difficult to be faithful. And such a person has to marry somebody with that understanding. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, you are going to be unhappy from the beginning to the end. Yes. Some cannot. They cannot. They will not. <laughs> Shant. 
mercy. Yeah. It depends on the type of person God is bringing to you. That's the reality. And you get one chance. And you got it. And you mess it up. Many times I've seen brothers who, not once, not twice, I've seen sisters reject this type of faithful brothers. And do you know why? They say they are boring. Yes, they say they are boring. It's true. They want somebody exciting. Yeah. No, I'm telling you, you know, my preaching is based on my interactions and my experiences in the church as a pastor for 35 years. It's not based on, like, I'm not imagining the things. How would I know all these things? Sometimes when I preach, you ask yourself, how would I know all these things? Yes. Yeah, it's boring. They, they want somebody more exciting and dangerous. Like that. Because danger, danger is thrilling. That's why some films are called thrillers. It's a thriller because there's danger in the film. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Lord, harmony. Do you understand harmony? Danny boy, play C. No, play D. D, D, the, the note D. D, just D. F sharp. Together, A. No, together, together. Yeah, so start again. D, only D. No, only D, single notes. Follow what I say. Marry to F sharp. Together, play together. The two. Play A with it, three of them. Is it harmonious? Play D alone. Play F sharp. Play with G. Is it working? The marriage is not working. You've added a note that when you add, it doesn't sound correct. Start again. This is how your marriage is going to be. Play D. D, D, only D. Again. Mm. 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 Add F sharp. Mm. Mm. Is it nice? Is it nice? How many? Add A to it. Add A. Three of them. Beautiful. And add another D to it. You see, this is an ultimate marriage. Shaka la ba shada la ba na. Now play D alone. D alone. Play F sharp. Okay, D and D and D sharp. Ooh. Is it working? Do it again, D and D sharp. This is an ill married couple. Two notes. Again. Your marriage will never sound like this. D and F sharp. Ah, romance. A for love, love, ah. and add another D for a, a ultimate. There are children here. I don't want to say certain words. K ma shata la bayaba. Your marriage will be nice. Your honeymoon. Your honeymoon. Danny boy, play C, C, C for calm. Another C. Wow. E. Together, 
are together. And add G. And the last C, the last C. Your honeymoon will be like this. It will be nice. People will be jealous of you. You send them pictures. You are drinking cook with ice and coconut juice on the beach. Wow. And the honeymoon will continue through the marriage. All sad faces are banished from the marriage in Jesus' name. Do you believe that? Yes. God is going to do it. If you listen to what we are saying, no one will go forward with an IMC. Give me D and D sharp. God forbid. Nobody will go forward with D and D sharp. Give it to me again. So even, thank you. It's, it's okay, we can't stand it. So you see, marriage is like that. When people outside your marriage, see, they, 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 they feel they are disturbed. Yes. It, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. So first love. Anybody, if you know that you are not happy and you want to change, change now. Don't go and then, because your marriages are going to be better than your father's and your mother's. Yeah. Have I told you about Bishop Saki's fridge? Oh, I told you. Yeah, I've, I've not told you before. Ah. In those days, you can't easily have a fridge. Yeah, but today, everybody has a fridge. Is it not true? The poorest person has a fridge. 300 cities, you get a fridge. 200 cities. But in those days, it was a very special thing. So, things that were special in older marriages, that only rare good marriages have them, they will be common amongst first love marriages. Yes. What a blessing. God is doing something and he's going to open doors. Now, I want to say something. And I want to charge the marriage school. Are you the marriage school? Yeah. A natural smell. How many of you feel you are smelling nice by this evening? Yes or no? So naturally... You are not nice unless you improve. True or not true. That's how you are in your personality and your behavior. You are not nice naturally. Even by the evening, you are not nice. So if you don't believe, you always be not nice. And not nice is a seed. Nice. When you sow not nice, you get not not nice sown in you, the person reaps not, not, not nice. And then, when you sow not, not, not nice, you receive not, 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 not nice. And then, it never ends. So, I command you and charge you. Teach the virgins how to behave. Don't hold back. Paul said, I did not hold back anything that was good, necessary for you. Amen. Recently, I was somewhere and a sister from a certain country, sit down, a certain country stood up to make a speech. 
and she made a speech about marriages from West Africa. And she, she made a comment. She said that she has noticed that ma- because she's not from West Africa, marriages from West Africa have these deficiencies, major deficiencies. She said that where she's from, we don't have those issues. And, and when she said it was true, it's across board, deficient. West Africa. So I'm not going to go into all that, but I can see if you are eating boiled fish, you 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 will never know that there is a fried one. Oh. Yes. That kebab that they are grilling there, if you want to know, they can boil it and give you boiled meat. And we'll see whether you, you it is the same experience or not. It's also all meat. But it's a different experience. Your experience will be beautiful. In Jesus' name. Marriage is Lord. Give the children a grace to marry as young people. Give them happiness in their marriages, Lord. Give them joy in their lives, Lord. Bless them, Lord, with the sounds of joy. And the sounds of laughter and peace, Lord. Answer their prayers, Lord. Send the appropriate person, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you for answering this prayer, Lord. And doing a mighty work in every life. In Jesus' name. Sit down. I want to tell you something. Do you know something that happened? You saw all the girls who came here that they've been in a relationship before. I'll tell you an, 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 uh, an error. You see, when you see a person there, you may think that, oh, this person is not a good person to marry. No. You see, God didn't make anybody who is not good. God made someone meet or suitable. There are a lot of people that are suitable for this, but not suitable for that. Yeah. So, God is in the business of giving you somebody who is suitable. Yes. You will find your suitable partner. Yes. For your life. Supernaturally. Supernaturally. You'll be walking around and God will bring the person. As Jesus was passing through Jericho, the person will be passing through your atmosphere and suddenly you'll be noticed. Don't ignore the promptings of the Spirit. Yeah. Promptings of the Spirit. As you go along, be sniffing and be saying, is this the one? (laughs) Hey! Genesis chapter 1. And the Lord and 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 uh, and the Lord said to Adam, see, see, <laughs> see. You know the check it, Genesis. And the Lord said, see. That's the word see. And you see, and God, and then the Bible, and another word that comes up. King James. Yes. Out of every I said Genesis chapter 1. Ha! Please search for the word see and saw. Okay. He spot your, spot your revelation for you. But God is and God saw anyway this man is not helping so God saw that it was good you must be able to see when something is good yes God is going to he says see I have given you yes Genesis 131 yes Genesis 131 come on 
and God saw everything that he had made. Behold, it was very good. No. That's not what I want. See. I want the word see, see, see. Anyway, your eyes must begin to see and notice. Yes. So God is going to begin to bring people to you and you must see. God saw. God is a seer and you are his child so you also see. There's no need to go looking anywhere. It's all around you. All around. Cadela, is it not true? It's right there. (laughs) God is blessing. You are finding what you need. And you will find it in the church. In Jesus' name. Number two, a lack of understanding. When I was a child, I speak as a child. You don't understand serious things. So from today, you are going to understand deep things. Yes. Some of you, when you watch the news, you just fall asleep. You can only watch action movies where there's not much talking. Only blows. And fighting. But any film where they talk, you start to fall. <laughs> you see that you're falling asleep. Huh? It shows a lack of something. Ask your neighbor, why do you sleep when people start talking? Hmm? Now, you see, if you marry somebody like that, you'll be married, you think you found a companion. When you go to the house, you think you have somebody to talk to. When you start to talk to the person, because the person is only into dresses and shoes and hair. But when it comes to something intelligent, let's discuss. The person is following us. Once there is a film where there is talking, you're falling asleep. And that's why I say sometimes, sometimes your beauty is advanced, more advanced than your, 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 I don't want to use brains. Let's say leadership. Leadership. So when a, a man, a good brother comes to propose to you, somebody who is the right type, you look at the person up and down and you say, ah, but you are not, are you my type? Are you my type? Meanwhile, you are just looking at how he looks today. But in the future, you, you'll be surprised. But you just look at him up and down. He said, you see that his belt is like, I mean, a, something that has been used to beat goats. But it's like your leadership is not developed. You look at the person, you say, ah, it's too short. It's too short, eh? A day will come where whatever the height, you will not, you you will just say, is it a male? You say, "Is is he a male? Is he a male? Today you are saying it's too short. A day will come when you ask, is he a male or female? It's a male, I like it. Is he a male, eh? Is he alive? Is he a male? I like it. No further questions. A male will do. A male will do. Is he a male? That's all. It's okay. I don't need to see him. It's okay. Yes. Hey! So your leadership has not developed as fast as your beauty and even as fast as the opportunities that are being presented to you. Most single ladies who have been 
who are sing older single ladies. I've, I've been doing research, studying. You'll be surprised at the people that wanted to marry them. Yes. That they said no. Yes. From research. This is research based. <laughs> you go into it, you, you'll be surprised. They, they can point to good brothers who are all over the place. So this one even wanted to marry me. This one wanted to marry me. This one wanted to, one day I told her sister, I said, not less than 10 to 14 people have proposed to you. She said, it's not possible. I said, count. And it was correct. Yes. You'll be pointing to that. See this guy there? That was, he wanted to marry. He was dying. He was kneeling. He was begging. But your leadership was the leadership of a child. So you use childlike understanding. You say, ah, this one. Oh, what? Look at the letter that he wrote. <laughs> come and see, come and see. Look at what he is. I'm speaking about research-based leadership. Lead yourself to victory. Don't think of the government. Think of yourself. You are a nation on your own. Yes. I'm talking about research-based analysis. Yes. They don't realize the implication. So rise up in the name of Jesus and lead yourself. Don't be sitting there expecting that, oh, something is going to come from somewhere. Yes. Believe that you have to rise up and work hard. Phlegmatic guys. You just sit down, it's like you are there. Your wife is a lioness. Is, you are going to marry someone who is going to work hard and provide. Tell the nearest brother, look, we are tired of kept men who just sit down for girls to work hard. And then we have to look after you. We are tired of, of kept men. Are you a kept man? Phlegmatic, lazy. Oh, we are going to approach Germany for a loan for this. We are going to see France for this. We are trying to take it to come and do this part. We are asking Saudi Arabia to do this part. We are asking Kuwait to do Do you know any country like that? So when you have a man like that, who will not rise up and do what you have to do? But sisters, some of the brothers, that's how they are. So you have to take them like that if you are going to, if you are going to marry you. Sometimes that's how it comes. You have to humble yourself and just flow with it. And know that, Charlie, this is, if I want a man, I'm going to get this type of man. A kept man may be better than no man. Maybe. Concentration. Say concentration. concentration. I'm prophesying to a, a sister. Don't, don't shout. There is a time where you have to concentrate on getting married. And not school. Focus and marry. And stop fooling. Say so you are going to do this. You are going to do masters. You are going to do whatever it is. You may never marry. Up and up and up and up. Before I realize, we are praying for you. I'm going to do masters. This, 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 this. I said, that's what I told you. Don't shout. Oh, just receive what I'm saying. <laughs> yes. Yes, there's a time to concentrate that the next important thing is to marry. I just want to marry. That's all. If you fool with it, you will not marry. Oh, I know. I, I don't need to marry now. It's not, it's not what's on my mind. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to do my... Uh, I'm going to do my masters after that. I'm going to do my MBA after that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to... You are not a man. And when you are focused on that, then you see that you, you take decisions with that in mind. It's not only brothers who have to concentrate on getting a beloved. Sometimes a sister, you have to concentrate in a way. Shakabaya. Receive it in Jesus' name.
You position yourself. Now, when you believe the messages on marriage, you have a nice kind of marriage. Soon. True. If you believe the messages on marriage, you have a nice kind of marriage. And your marriage will be a very long honeymoon. Those at the back are not excited about. Those at the back are not excited about. It's true. I won't, I won't lie to you. Those at the back. Those at the back there. I don't know where they are from. Are you members? Are you are you first love members or you are? Do you think they are in the first love church? I don't think so. I don't think so. You are in third love. I hear you are in third love, second love. Second love and third love. Are you in second love and third love? Which love are you in? Okay, sit down. Wow. wow. Hallelujah. Amen. First love. That's why you can have a very good girl shepherd. Now, when I talk about marriage, by the way, I'm talking about Christians. Unbelievers' marriages are different. Or when you are married to an unbeliever, it's different. There are different problems. So please, it's only a particular section. Please understand me. Yeah. Because people that have been married to unbelievers, they have hell mostly from their husbands. Yes. Hell. Hell, hell. A lot of them have. Yes. From the men. Yes. The men are, many of them are beasts in the marriage. Proper one. Yes. That's not a, that's not the area. No, I'm not talking about. At all. That's, at all. that's a different marriage, and I'm not because there are no unbelievers here. I know that you are believers. I'm talking about Christians and pastors. Okay. Now, that's that's why. I, I would mention the girls, but they are they are the cause of a lot of problems in marriages of Christians. No, no, unbelievers, it's not them. They are not the cause. They are the victims. They are the victims in unbeliever marriages. The girls are the victims. They are the losers. Yes. That's not that's not the topic. If you want to discuss that, you can come see me. We discuss that one after. That's a different topic. Talk about the Christian ones with the pastors. Yeah. That's different. The tables turn. Power is changed. Yeah. So you have to listen carefully, especially those of you who want to be in the ministry. You want to be happy. Yeah. You can have a good shepherd. She can visit the sheep, care for the people, Preach the word, listen to messages, walk in anointing. When she enters the marriage, that is the real Tarzan that has come to the not, not the not the one that they were singing. She's restless at night. I tell you, that's the gorilla that they were singing about. <laughs> Restless natives at night. Sit down. I don't know why you are standing. What I am saying, because there are some people standing, sitting behind you that you, they cannot see. And afterward, they will be insulting you that you were blocking my view. So that's why I say lay hands on them always so that the spirit would have entered into them and made them stand up. Do you know why you've been standing up when I'm preaching? Ezekiel 2 2. 
Ona rezika tutu. The spirit entered into me when he spoke unto me and set me upon my feet. Sit down, sit down. The spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet that I heard him that speak unto me. Ezekiel 2, two. take your seats. You are going home with an anointing. Your levels are changing in this program. Amen. Oh, please, please. Sit down. I know the spirit is entering into you. Why don't you fasten your seatbelt so that you, you, you don't, it doesn't jump you out. Maybe you should tie your belt behind the chair. Round, if it's long enough, and strap you to your chair. And to lift the chair too. Now, listen. And I want you to listen because first love marriages are graduating into the highest kind. Everybody will want to marry a first lover. It's true. Look, I, I just came from, shh, I just came from the Caribbean. And I met with the, I met with the pastors. You'll be there for honeymoon. It's something that will happen. Yes. Yeah. And I met with the first lovers and then with the other grown-ups. The marriages of the first lovers. When the first lovers were just giving their testimonies. You know. When they left. And the bishops and the other senior, they were all sitting there in wonder. God is moving. God is moving. That is how your testimony will be. It will be wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, I was making a point. Don't distract me. I'm saying that some girls are good shepherds, pastors, preachers, anointed. They can mobilize basentes and batentes and basontes. But when they come home, then you see that Schwarzenegger himself is in the house. Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Have you seen Schwarzenegger? He put a coffin on his shoulder and was holding a gun and was moving. Hey! You see, when you do that, your husband will be very quiet in the house. It will be as though he's very self-controlled. But is that he's not himself. Yes. He's not himself. Yes. He may be quiet, but he's not himself. Yes. It's not that he's a phlegmatic, but he's not himself. He has become a philosopher. He's just meditating in the house. Hey! It will never happen to you in Jesus' name. When you come home, you will be met in the house by a nightingale singing your welcome. Kamalo Shababa. God is giving you a nightingale wife. A singing wife. She will sing the hello. Hello. Hmm. 
not this wife who will not even raise up the head to look at you to see who has come. You've come, eh? You've come, eh? The microwave is working now. The microwave is working now. We have repaired it. It's working. Wow. I declare your marriage a super first love marriage in the name of Jesus. Look. You see, when you have first love, everything is possible. Oh, yes. When you meet your first boyfriend, whatever he says, Charlie, he says, I'm taking you to the end. He says, I'll go. He says, we are doing this. Let us do. But your second or third love, by that time, you remember, you say that you are inspired. This thing, I followed one before. It wasn't good. <laughs> sit down. You are distracting me. Sit down. Sit down. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Eh? Something very important. There are some sisters who don't have a wonderful, happy relationship because. They believe the word of God about basenta, about church growth, about anointing, about prayer, about everything. But when it comes to relationship and you tell them, stop saying those things. Smile on arrival. When you say be cheerful, it's the breakup of my relationship. What, say that, what is the meaning of that song? That song is advice. That song is a, is a spiritual counsel to anybody about relationship. If you love me, then you will smile at me. Look at it. If you love me, you'll be full of life. You'll be full of fun. fun. You'll be full of mm -hmm. If you love me, you will be cheerful around me. Cheerful. And if you love me, you like my friends. You like my friends too. So child. So child. Please learn these lessons about love. I don't want you to feel the pain I felt. Please listen to all I'm telling you. I'm sharing from my heart. When I broke my heart, it really hurt. It's the breakup of my relationship. It's a broken heart once again. Once again. He said that I don't love him much. He said you don't love him. And he says he cannot feel my love. You can't feel because there's no said, feeling from you. I'm leaving you. You don't love me. If you love me, why don't you give yourself to me? He said to me. personalities end up are you listening those of you who are sitting excuse me I want to see those who are sitting down over here okay I'm going back two personalities that go to divorce most two types number one narcissistic personality disorder and number two um Borderline personality disorder. Narcissistic personality disorder, they have two problems. One, self-absorbed. Self-absorbed to themselves. 
And then number two, indifferent to the needs of others. So if you love if me, you love me, you think about me more. Think about me more. Think of your absorbed in yourself. Me, you talk it, to the song me. is a prophecy. The song is a counsel for the word of God. I self-absorb into your phone, into your WhatsApps and your whatever, and just looking into your screens and into your personal life. Why don't you smile? I don't feel like smiling now. I don't, I don't want to answer. I don't want to, I don't feel like this guy. I don't feel like, I don't want to be happy. I don't feel like being happy. You have signed already. It's too late. You are stuck with me. If you love me, you think about me more. If you love me, you talk to me. Oh. Oh. And if you love me, you will show me that you care. And if you love me, you hold my hand. So time. Come on, child. You must learn how to love. You must learn how to love. If you don't. The song is counseling you. I'm sure you've not heard the counseling as much as you are hearing it now. Yeah. It's prophetic. And I said that some people believe the word about preaching, anointing, following up, this church growth, prayer, this. But when it comes to relationship, you must learn how to love. Is there not a song in that? Like sing that like you must learn how to love. If you don't want to feel the pain I felt, you must learn how to love. God so loved the world that he gave You gave something. Kind of say, Inspector, I was expecting to be pampered. I was expecting to have surprises. I was expecting the door to be open for me. I was expecting my birthday to be celebrated. Why are you expecting so much? It's your name expectation. When it's you your name love expectation. someone, you give and give. When, when you, you love someone, love you give and not only expecting something to be given to you or done for you. You give and give. Look, sit down. You guys are distracting me now. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Why are you standing? The spirit entered into you. And then it put you on your feet. And you stood up. Receive the anointing in the name of Jesus. Shama Kabala Bashama. Now, what's the topic? Do you know the topic? You forgotten the topic. <laughs> faith is life. Life is faith. So your good marriage life is a result of your beliefs about marriage. Your beliefs about marriage. Yes. And the songs that have been sung. Your beliefs result in that kind of marriage. If somebody said, don't marry an unbeliever. So, this, there are different types of unbelievers. You don't know this guy. I mean, this is a gentle guy. Mommy, uh, mommy, he's a very gentle man. He's a gentle man. I mean, his voice. He's a minimal fornicant. He's not so, it's not so deep. He's not, he's not a bad boy. He's a minimal fornicant. <laughs> he's a minimal unbeliever. And mommy, you see, the, 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 the brothers in church, they are not, they are not gentle, they are not cultured. They are not, they are not, they are not romantic. They, they propose with scriptures. They're not exciting. Huh? No what? No surprises. No pampering. Huh? 1 
best love boys. They are not romantic. So that is why this guy, Mr. Zah, Brother Zah, yeah, you, you say he's not a believer, but he goes to Prikatopoulos Church. And he's, he's a member there. Prikatopoulos. Prikatopoulos denomination. <laughs> Prikatopoulos denomination. You don't respect. It's not only Lighthouse. It's not only First Love. That is a church. Oh, is that what you are telling me? Have I said it's the only church? Because it seems you don't like people who don't come from here. Daddy, you must be more open-minded. Yeah. I'll slap you just that I should be open-minded. My mind and your mind, which one is open? Your small mind, how many years have you lived? And my mind, which has gone for so many years, which one is open? Your choco below mind, you said that my mind is open. Maggie cube mind. Maggie cube. Those at the back, you see? Yeah. I think they have to be moved. The back people have to be moved. At the back there, right? Sit down. Okay. Tell somebody, my life, my life, my life is going higher because of the things I believe. My whole life is changing according to the things I believe. Yes. Yes. If, if the Bible says, if the Bible teaches you not to divorce, believe it. Just believe it. It's better. Believe it. According to your belief, your life goes. Yes. Your faith is your life. Your life is carved out by your beliefs. If it's a husband, love your wife. Your, your life... Your, you, you are a husband, you, 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 you are stingy like a boxer who has, like, you've, you've, you've made your fist as if you are boxing all the time. You are, you are like a boxer. Are you a boxer? Are you, are you? You've closed your fist as if you are fighting. You must change your boxing to karate and open your fist like that. So that the money will be flowing out of your palms. Open your palms. Sit down. Your life on the mission field is based on your beliefs. Yes. Your belief carves out your life. It carves out your life. Sharon, come to me, my dear. Where, where, are you li where do you live? Where do you live? In Dominican Republic. You used to live at uh, where? Um, London. London? Wow. And what language do they speak in in uh, Dominican? Spanish. Wow. And you are speaking also Spanish now? I'm learning the Spanish. Wow. And why do you live there? Missions, Bishop. Mission? Not a uh, job? No job. Business. No business. business? Is it you went there on business? No, no do holiday. Do they have be beaches there? Beautiful beaches. They're the best beaches. Best beaches. Best. That's uh, which airlines come to Dominican? Um, Emirates, Copper. Emirates. Jet Blue. Emirates comes to Dominican Republic. Yes, it connects with um, Jet Blue. Jet Blue. Yes. 
movie stars. All the movie stars go to Dominican Republic for their honeymoon. Honeymoon. Yeah. You are being shown a new destination for your honeymoon. You are being shown a new destination for your honeymoon. First love honeymoons are going to be fantastic. Fantastic. I'm telling you. Go, go back, please. Otherwise, you cannot hear. Look. And you see, what is going to happen is that you see full-time ministry. We, we don't know that we are working. Like, if you ask me whether I am working, I'll be surprised. I don't know what answer to give. Working. When do I start and when do I close? I, I don't know that I'm working. It's, it's my life is loving God and serving God and living for God. So I don't know. I don't have closing time, starting time, beginning, holiday, vacation. There's nothing like that. I'm living my faith. Now, your first love marriages are going to be like the honeymoon. People will say, when did the honeymoon start? And when did the honeymoon was? Was it three weeks? You say, ah, we, we just started into a certain realm and we have been moving in that realm for the last nine years. Wow! And you, 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 so people will not know, is it honeymoon, you guys? One day, a certain first lover got married and he was going on his honeymoon when he sat on the plane with the new first love bride. As they were sitting there, a man was also sitting by and he was looking at them and he came to us, are you people just married? And he said, yes. Ah, I want to take a picture to show my wife how, how, how it is when a new, new people are married. And you see, that's why you must marry in Ghana because all the flights are in the night when you are going for honeymoon is in the night. Hey, with a very cold air conditioner in the plane. <laughs> Look, God is doing something in first love marriage. You have to believe. Yes. Some of you, your marriage, you have already started with some hiccups. <laughs> it is cured from today in Jesus' name. And you have to believe. You have to believe that you have to stay in it and that it can work and that it will work in the name of Jesus. You have to believe it. If you don't believe it, it will not work. You have to believe that it will be okay and that somehow it is okay. Yes. And that even if, if, if it is not okay, then it is a, it is a test. Yes. Uh, in your case, you are not a, a married, but you are test, being tested. <laughs> you are Joseph. And, they, and he sent his servant Joseph. And they had his feet with fetters. And he was laid in iron. So in your case, the marriage is an iron. You are laid in an iron. And your feet are hurt with fetters. Until his word came. Psalm 105. Until his word came. 18. Yes, they hurt his feet with fetters. He was laid in iron. You cannot go out. You are stuck in it. So in your case, it's an iron. But you see, it's for, it's for a good cause. Until his word came. Until his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. So if in your case, it's not a, 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 a continuous honeymoon, but it's an iron. And your feet are, because each time you try to move away from it, it cuts you. 
Your feet are hurt with fetters. And you are laid in an iron. Then it is from the Lord, Joseph. You are a new Joseph. Your spiritual name is Joseph. Until his word came. And it will go on until the word comes. That's it for you. No change. Yeah. But all are good. All are good. So I don't know. Depending on your calling, you may land in an iron. When you, when you marry, you know, as soon as you... Ta -na -na -na, then the first chain will go crack, crack, crack with bad luck. Ta -na -na -ta, da -da -da, crack, crack, crack. Da -da -da -da. Then in the chains you'll be walking for the rest of your life. You'll be in the chain. He was laid in iron. His feet were hurt with fetters. Until his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. Yes. There are some like that too. Yes. But still, as the word of the Lord comes, you see that the Lord says, stay in it. Yeah. You be in it like that. Where will you go? Fight on. Amen. Stand in the fire and play. Yeah. You see why Stevie Wonder is great? Because he's blind and he's playing. You are seeing and you are playing. There are two types of pianists. Those who can see and who, those who can't see. They all play piano. You people, what's the topic? Faith. Faith. Yes. I live by faith. My, you are living. My life is a product of my faith. My marriage is a product of my faith. Of what I believe in. How, how, how is your marriage a product of your faith? <laughs> because I believe in the things that you teach us. The things that, we, that you tell us to do. You've been hearing me saying things? Yes, you say a lot of things. Me, but I'm always preaching about the work, for, work of God. I don't preach about marriage. But within, the, within that preaching, there are also nuggets about marriage within. So those who are really spiritual, they will pick up. And then they will use that for their marriage. Those who are spiritual will pick up certain things. Yes, the counsel, the little things that you mention in your messages. While, you, while you're preaching about us going on missions, working for God, stirring up our gift... Then you mention things about marriage. But it's hidden behind jokes and laughter. So if you don't pick it up thinking it's a joke, you won't be blessed. It's hidden within the laughter and the joke. Have you heard me joking before? Have you heard me joking before? But you are laughing, isn't it? Yes. You are laughing, but it's serious. Yes. So it's hidden. It's hidden. And you tell us to say yes, to say sorry, to smile, to swim. These are the things you mentioned. So to have sex, to scream, to scratch, to bite. These are all things you mentioned. Shouts of joy, SOJs. Ah, you have mentioned a lot. So. Scratching. Scratching. Biting. Biting, screaming. Screaming. Screaming, yes. Yeah. Give the Lord a scream. <laughs> hey. Hey. People are enjoying things. So you see, the level of your life is determined by the things you believe. That's it. Always. Huh? She has done. She has mixed the word with faith. All that she has been hearing, she has mixed it with faith, and she's doing it. Oh, Bishop, when we listen to their marriages, when we were in Barbados, are you in Barbados? In Barbados, Bishop. As I listen to her. Describing, I said, This is not missions, this is a, a new kind of life. <laughs> this is not missions, this is a new kind of life. Give the Lord a shout of praise. A new kind of life, a new kind of life, yes. It's really a new kind of life. New brand new, life. new brand new, brand new marriages. New brand new, yeah. 
Sia Raba marriages. Yeah. New, brand new. Yeah. So. But I never knew that Dominican Republic is where people, movie stars and things go. They go a lot. And Punta Cana, that's the main place. That's where all the resorts are. All the celebrities from America, they go there. Punta Cana. Punta Cana, yeah. What is Punta Cana? Punta Cana is the area. That's the name of the area in um, Dominican Republic where all the nice blue beaches. Go there, 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 go there. Blue beaches, blue beaches. Now you see, you see, I you see, I if if you don't, I, I'm preaching. I tell you, shh. I tell you, learn how to swim, and you don't know how to. When you see the blue beach, you just be standing there with your trousers and your tie, feeling hot, taking selfies, and sending WhatsApp that look at where I am. And also, it's all inclusive, so which is very different from other countries. So when you come to the Caribbean, you just pay once. When you come there, everything you've already paid for, the drinks in the fridge in the hotel room, they're paid for. Anything you eat on the beach, all the restaurants you go to, there are no prices on the menu. There, there's no, wait, 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 say it slowly, shh, shh. There are no prices on what? On the menu. It's all inclusive. So when my husband took me, Pastor Ruel, we got there. We thought, okay, the drinks in the hotel you in the hotel room. Normally you pay for it or you get charged. But they told us, oh, all oh, the drinks are yours. It was fully stocked. There was Sprite, there was Coke, there was soda, water, everything. When you drink as much as drink as much as you want, eat as much as you want. There's so many restaurants. There's Mexican, Chinese, Thai, anything. And when you order, it'll come free. It's, you've paid for it. So when you've paid for your, your stay there for two days, three days, one week, two months, you've paid for all your food, everything. So it's like an all you can eat. You are going places in the name of Jesus. Wow. Tell your neighbor who doesn't know how to swim, I pity you if you don't know how to swim. You can't go to all the nice places in the world. Shh. Look. Put up my scripture, the aisles shall wait for thee. The islands, Isaiah, it will be in 60, 50, they're all there. The isles shall wait for thee. You see, God knows why he was sending people to islands. Yes. Because islands there, Charlie, is the sea and the beaches. Blue sea, blue beaches, white. White sands. The isles shall wait upon thee. Beautiful. Yes. So God is waiting for you to go on a mission. A mission will be nice. Yes. It's those who have been sent to missions to countries we don't have beaches like Zambia and so on. I mean, those are the ones that will experience. But that's why God has given them Victoria Falls and other things like that. But the rest of, the, rest of the world is waiting Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. So the marriages, it depends on your beliefs. So marry somebody who has the same beliefs. That's why sometimes it's not so easy to marry from another church or from another place. Or the person who comes and start, all right, what are you talking about? What did you say I should do? What did you say? Pardon? I should scream? Scream? About what? I don't do that. I don't do that. It's just scratch. <laughs> scratch what? <laughs> Sit down.
Wisdom five. My son, attend unto my wisdom and bow thine ear to my understanding. Amen. Amen. Now this, this, this scripture, all right, yes, it's working. This scripture, uh, I want us to really sort of go through very quickly because that's all under wisdom five. We take a long time on each verse. You know, Proverbs has so many chapters. We'll be on it for 20 weeks. That will take us to the end of the year. But let's try hard to get some wisdom keys for our lives. Amen. Amen. Today is Easter Sunday. Jesus rose from the dead on Easter Sunday. That's what we celebrate and we thank the Lord. Now, that is the great wisdom of God that God should send his son to die on the cross. And that is the wisdom that men can never relate with. All right? But here we see details of God's wisdom. It says, my son, attend to my wisdom and bow thine ear to my understanding. Amen. Amen. Now, right there, you see a father telling you to listen to his wisdom. Listen to my wisdom. Because every person has wisdom. Every father has wisdom. If you take, um, I know some churches, they actually teach you about mortgages and how to borrow and so on. That is the wisdom they have. And it, it maybe works for them. All right? So that is why the father said, my son, attend to, attend to my wisdom. Because wisdom is the way you think. Everybody thinks differently. Right? Like people can't understand why we'd be in church at this time. And some people... It's our wisdom to be in church all day long. So remember that there are different opinions. One time I met a professor from the university and he explained to me about my my writings. He said that my books are one opinion out of 200 opinions about the same topic. Yes. Yes. And that if I'm to get a PhD or a degree from the university, I have to write all the 200 opinions that exist about a topic. Do you understand? Like, these are the opinions about demons. Some say this is one school of thought. That's what it means, school of thought. You must have heard that before. This is my opinion. Then another professor, so and so, also said this. That is his opinion. Then another third professor, he also said the the 67th professor also feels that this. And I have to know all the 200 opinions. And after knowing the 200 opinions, I have my opinion. Do you understand? Uh, Before I can qualify to get a... uh, That's what helps you to get a their kind of a degree. All right? Yeah. So, if, so as I just teach that, the Bible says this, the Bible says this, that. That's my opinion. That's what he says. You see. Now that is why many people who go to accredited places, when they finish learning the 200 opinions, they have no more opinions. <laughs> yes. And they, 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 they no longer believe as much as they, they did. So, I don't want to mention names, but there are some schools, you, you'll be surprised that, you know, before they were real, they were, not real, but before they were anointed schools, which teach on a faith basis, right? Any person who went to scripture, you know, was a very serious Christian and a serious believer, has to go to, certain schools to study theology. And when you study theology, that's what 
you can you go through. Demons, this is our opinion, this is opinion, that's his opinion, that's what they think. Some people think it's past miracles. Then we so what's your some people think it's past. Some people think it was the apostles. Some people think it's just psychological. Some people think it's not this. Some people say this based on this. I say, ah, oh, 200, everybody. Uh-huh. So it's difficult to believe. But because of that, all the people who were who had faith and were zealous because we didn't know any other way to become trained in the ministry had to go to these places which kill faith. It's not intended to kill faith, but look, when you question something in a certain way, there's no more faith. Like Jesus, when he came, he said, ah, are you not uh, uh, Mary's? Your mother is who? Mrs. Mary. Ah, you say you are the son of God now. How do you become the son of God? So where they question him, is this, not, is this not a sister? Is this not a carpenter? Is it not? They couldn't, there he could not do miracles. Faith doesn't come by questioning. Faith comes by hearing and believing. Yeah. So, you find out that um, there are many opinions for one thing. And that is why, that is what is taught sometimes in some, some schools. Many, many opinions. When you don't know, you will think that for your school to be respected, you know, you need accreditation. But accreditation rather means you are coming to teach the 200 opinions. Even the, They have even God, theories about God. Is God real? Or the God of the gaps theory. Mishosaki was an expert at the God of the gaps theory. It's like when there is a gap in knowledge, like maybe we get to a point and there is a gap, no, nobody has the answer, then you fill it with God. So that's the God of the gaps theory. All, all kinds of whether God is there, why people believe in God, so many theories. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? In the end, you don't believe. So, one time I was checking with experienced Bible schools and I found, example, Christ for the Nations where Bishop Ida, Archbishop Idahosa was trained. When you go on the Bible school, they write, the board of this school has decided not to be accredited. Do not want to be accredited. Yes, it's for training ministers, not for questioning faith and searching for opinions. Yes. And schools like Kenneth Hagin's Bible School, where we have trained thousands of ministers, we don't have a credit. We don't want the secular approval. So, so you must understand why these things exist, because it's faith. The people that gathered at Independence Square, it's not by a thousand opinions of one thing. That's not what we have been teaching. That. So what's your opinion about a shepherd? I don't think it's necessary. Do you think it's necessary? Okay, it's not necessary. Because these are the 18 reasons why it's not necessary. These are the six reasons why it's necessary. By the time we finish, we don't even believe in shepherding again. Yeah. Are you there? So remember, my son, attend unto my wisdom. And bound thine ear to my understanding. So try to catch the wisdom in the house. Like in this house, what is the wisdom here? The wisdom that has brought us this far is the wisdom of seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. That's the wisdom that we have. It's the wisdom of the house. The wisdom here is that the, self, the borrower is a servant of the, to the one who lends the money. So don't borrow. You can take it, you can leave it. But that's a blessing. That thou mayest regard discretion and that thy lips may keep knowledge. Verse 3. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb and her mouth is smoother than oil. (laughs) 
you will never fall into that oil. But her end is bitter as wormwood and sharp as a two-edged sword. All right? So you must be careful with the lips of a strange woman. You must remember that as a brother, this is a son or my son. As a brother, a lady is like grilled chicken to you. Yes. Fried chicken on the plate. And it's moving like that. Hey! <laughs> and sisters, you must know that you are like fried chicken, grilled chicken. I don't know whether children are supposed to be in the in this service. Or, uh, uh? I don't I don't feel free preaching this. I don't feel free. I'm jumping to Proverbs chapter 10. No, it's Easter. It's Easter. Let the children stay. It's okay. Let the children stay. Let the children stay. It's Easter. I'll just read. I'll just read the verse and then we close. Maybe this is not a good Easter message. All right. Her feet go down to death, and her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou should ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. You see, all brothers should know. That when you are looking at a girl, eh, you should know that you need glasses. Because you are having what we call blood vision. Yes. Blood vision. beautiful but you are having blurry vision blurry vision and if God does not give you if God does not give you supernatural spectacles you see that you have not seen it well at all It's wearing good at the time. Her mouth is smoother than oil. Hey. But her feet go down to death and her steps take hold on hell. 
Her ways are movable. What is going on? Hey, movable ways. If she sees that you are spiritual, she can. Oh, I was studying this scripture today. Her ways are movable. If she sees. She sees that you are into music. Music. She'll mention certain songs you want to wow. Her ways are movable. That is why people marry, and after some time, you see that they are saying that the sister is not spiritual at all. But before, adaptable. After marriage, say that she has no time to be in church. But before, she's oh, and we are around. We are flowing, Charlie. Yeah, we are flowing. We are flowing. Ease and grace. We are flowing. Movable ways. Change your style. Change your style. Change your style. When you tell her, I want to go to Timbuktu as a missionary, she say, Yes, me too. I wanted also to be a missionary to Mongolia. She will talk with you about missions. Her ways are movable. That thou canst not know them. You don't know what you are dealing with. Many brothers, if they would tell you, they would tell you that, hey, I didn't know what I was married. My vision wearing good at the time. I thought she was gentle. Because when she's talking to you, a voice, hello. Hello. Oh, hi. Is it just, yes, it's me. <laughs> But <laughs> if she if she if she doesn't know that it's you, hello, 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 who is that? Hey, hello, hello. Okay, verse seven. Thou canst not know them. Hear me now, therefore, all ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Yes. Don't depart from the words of your father's mouth, your pastor's mouth. The Bible, the word of God. Don't go away from it. Yes. Remove thy way far from her. And come not nigh the door of her house. Yes. Look, every young man is like a man who is fasting. Yes. Like a man who is fasting. And you are getting to the end of your fast. And you are seeing chicken that is roasting like any rice. You see that thing is going round like this. Hey, hey. Movable chicken is turning around. Look, when you are fasting, eh, serious fasting, look, 
everything is nice. Hey, have you experienced it before? Everything. One day I was fasting, getting to the end of the fast, and I passed by papaya. At that time, they used to grill chicken outside. Do they still do it? And the chickens were turning like this. I said, oh Lord my God. Look at this. Movable. Movable chickens. So brothers, you must realize that you are affected by your fasting. From a certain age, you have appetites and desires. And you have restricted yourself. So when you see the chicken moving, say, hey, even the feathers, you like to eat them. <laughs> feathers. You, you fry the feathers and say, I like the feathers. The feathers are crispy. I like the feathers. Crispy feathers. Verse 9. Lest thou give thine honor unto others and thy years unto the cruel. A lot of brothers are experiencing cruelty. Yes. Cruelty. Yes. Wicked. <laughs> Look. All the time when I preach, I say, people, what I'm saying, it sounds fantastic. It's because it sounds fantastic and impossible and incredible should make you alert that the man may not be saying what he's saying out of the blue. Cruelty. Yeah. You see, people become calm. Quiet. Yes, and the cruelty. You see the people hungry, but you have you have signed over. You see, this room eh, a lot of a lot of agreements have been signed. I sign my yes to you. Yes. I've signed my yes to you. The rest of the years. Yes. Experience. Whatever. Yeah. And your blood vision will make you see a cruel thing as a nice thing. And you can't, you can't help it. You are a human being. Till you die, you will be a human being. Yes. President Mugabe, who's about 90 years old, he has a son of about 20 or 18. The, the nature God has given you till 70s. It will not go. So, Charlie, if you are signing from 25 onwards to cruelty, you don't understand it. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. Those of you who fall in love with strangers, this verse alone should let you know that you have nothing to do with a stranger. Stranger here means stranger. Strange, unknown, we don't know you, we don't know much about, we know some parts, we know this, but we don't know everything. Yeah. We don't know everything. You don't know everything. But there are people, as they stay around longer, you know them more. As strangers is are the key is the key sign of a dangerous person. Wow. Yes, and nobody so you just come. Wow, yes. I'm here. But unfortunately, many people fall for strangers. Yes. The person for you is the person who is around 
and know. Even the apostles, when they were going to choose an apostle, they chose somebody who has accompanied with them for three years. Because you know, it's not easy to pretend. After some time, what you are pretending about, it sort of comes out. Yourself will come one day and see that, hey. Oh, now let nice, see Charlie. Look, if you don't want to believe, why do you think that God put badness in men and goodness in women? It's nothing like that. Badness is equally shared amongst all of us. Do you understand? But the problem is that girls look too nice and gentle and beautiful. So we can't even imagine, we brothers, we can't even imagine that you are some way. It's only from the preaching that you say, eh, eh. But it's like we can't even imagine it. But you'll be surprised. Girls don't like to work for girls. It's like, oh, no, no, no. I like this man to be my boss. He'll be kinder to me. Because of your own wickedness, you know. Cruelty. Yeah. Strangers, you will never marry a stranger. Let, let, let me just tell you straight away. Those of you sometimes say, you've got a beloved, you want to come and show the beloved. Don't bring any strangers to us. Forget it. It won't work. Is it clear? Tell your neighbor, don't forget about strangers. Forget about strangers. We are not having strangers here. And thou mourn at the last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. Yes. When your flesh and your body is consumed is when you are old. Your flesh is consumed. Your body is consumed. You become Ugbo. <laughs> Wisdom 5. Verse 13. And I have not obeyed the voice of my teachers. Nor inclined on my ear to them that instructed me. Look. Marrying and having relationships, trust more in instructions and words from teachers. Both boys and girls, trust more. Otherwise, you will say, I didn't obey the voice of my teachers, my instructors. Because you just don't know. You just don't know. One day, a brother was going to marry a certain sister, and I told him, Look, this is what is going to happen. I told him, This is what is going to happen. And after, and I told him, I told him in front of his beloved, I said, this is what she's going to do to you. This is what's going to happen. I, I, I didn't, I was, I was not afraid of the, of, the, of the beloved. I said, this is what's going to happen. And after, he still got married. Later on, I saw him and he said, you said it. You said it. It has happened. Exactly. 100%. But you can't believe that it will happen. Lest you come and say, I have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to them that instructed me. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation assembly. Verse 15. Drink waters out of thine own cistern and running waters out of thine own well. You know, I, you have to get that message. Waters out of your own well. God is going to give you your own well Amen. where you can drink water regularly. Amen. And that's what God is trying to create for you. Now, somebody may say, So, Mr. Bishop, man, are you saying that 
this sister is not good and not a good sister. Why should I not marry this one? So are you saying that she's bad? No, she's not bad, but she's not good for you. Yes, you see, the Bible says, I will get him a help meet or suitable for you. Let's face it, not all clothes are suitable for you. Some of them, when you wear on a bonnet, you look funny. Have you not had clothes that when you wear, you look funny? And when somebody else wears the same thing, the person looks very nice. Because your bottoms are differently shaped. Different shapes. If it's pointed backwards, your dress will look like a waterfall after. If it's pointed to the sides, your dress will look like a fan. So it depends on what you are getting to wear. You get what I'm saying? So the person you are getting, it's not that the person is bad, but for you, is it suitable? If the person is not suitable and you force yourself to marry the person, you may say my English wearing good at the time. And I didn't understand the proposal well at the time. But you are understanding the message. Not all clothes are good for you. It's always it's a dress. I'm going to no, don't do that. Yes, it's a waterfall or a fan. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad. And rivers of waters in the streets. Every man has a fountain. We all know what fountains are. You know? And when a fountain is closed down, it gets rusted. Do you understand? And when it gets rusted, it doesn't work. Because all the joints and the mechanics are not working. There are so many complex joints. It's wearing good at the time. So God is saying, let thy fountains, God wants fountains to be dispersed. Wow. That's the will of God. And where should the fountains be dispersed? In the streets. God is giving you your own streets where the fountains can be dispersed abroad. I'm preaching a good message. Wow. Receive your own personal streets. And receive your personal fountains. Let her be as the loving hind and the pleasant roe. God wants to give you a loving hind and a pleasant roe. A good wife is an antelope. Yes. She's agile. She skips. That is why the future of the dancing stars is very bright. Because they are very agile, athletic, gymnastics, choreography, aerobics. Receive it. Those of you who are sitting down, watching, you are just dancing with your eyes. You don't know what you are missing. Yes. Some 
People don't read the Bible and don't behave like pleasant antelopes. They behave like unpleasant hippopotamus. Boom. 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 Ghana girls, they don't like walking. Boom. 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 And the husband will be when you touch a hippopotamus he may not even feel it birds sit on them they don't feel it birds eat from there whatever they don't have feelings you will never be a hippopotamus let her breast satisfy thee at all times that is why I use the word chicken. If we hadn't used the word chicken, you would not think of the word satisfaction or being full. Wow. Make it be a war, Charlie. Be thou ravished always with her love. Look. All these things will be like fairy tales to you. You see, grown-ups, if I'm preaching to grand, they will just be looking at (laughs) the things that you are preaching. It's a theoretical something. We don't know what you are saying. If you don't listen to these words, you will give yourself to cruelty. Yes. Wickedness. Recently, I heard of a certain wicked Woman, she, she took the husband out of the church. Said, you are leaving this church. You are leaving the church. You are leaving the church. You are leaving the church. Otherwise, please. Yeah. Why will thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger? Why? Because you don't have your own. That's why you are ravished with the love of strangers. Yes. Because you don't have yours. Why would you eat a chicken from the road? You ask those who got married. They say that, wow, I've got chicken at home now. I go eat at home. The reason you are always buying white on the road is there is nothing at home. You know that when you go home, there is no food there. So your different appetites must be satisfied outside. You are delivered from strangers. You know, as I'm preaching, you are receiving wisdom. For the ways of a man are before the eyes of the Lord and he pondereth all his goings. His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself and he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. You know, marriage is for young people. Don't let anybody deceive you. It's not about old age, middle age. When you are born again Christian, you marry as a young person. Yeah. If you are not a Christian, you don't need to marry. You can just stay, pull around, go here, go here, go here. Maybe if you are in the 40s somewhere and you want to settle down, then you find somebody and settle down. You don't, you don't need to. You, why, why would you even marry? If I was an unbeliever, I don't know why, why I would marry. What is the point? You are free, man. You move, I mean, from flower to flower. Why, why do you need to? Yeah. So, there's no point. If you don't believe in God, you just keep moving around all over the place. Fool around, do whatever, make yourself happy. On and on and on and on. And you speak like the way they speak. Unbelievers speak. Yeah. 
Are you there or you are leaving? I don't even know I don't even know why you are here on Easter Sunday at this time. Yeah. He shall die without instruction. And in the greatness of his folly, he shall go astray. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, this is the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning of ministry. If you read Timothy, where Paul was saying, if anyone wants to be a bishop, first thing must be the husband of one wife. It's like your first wisdom is seen in your relationship with the opposite sex. That is like your, the beginning of your wisdom. So Proverbs 1, 2, 3, 4, that's where he told wisdom is this, wisdom is this. But from chapter 5, he starts to actually give advice. Do this, do this. And from 5, 6, and 7, he's talking about women. Yeah. Charlie, the girls are beautiful. Oh. How many realize that Charlie, the girls, they, they fine? If fine or no fine? Fine too much. Chicken, chicken licking. So your, your first wisdom, can you choose can you choose? It shows you. Can you choose? Can you settle? When with a lot of different pieces of chicken, can you pick one? Like you'll be standing there. Me cry, what should I take? Me cry, what should I take? You poke this one a bit, poke this one, poke this one. It shows that you can, you can settle. Because even after you've chosen, as you are going, you see somebody's place. Ah! What a bigger piece of chicken. That my chicken was, my chicken is small. My chicken is small. So it shows. Can you settle? Can you choose? That's why a lot of jobs, they say, Are you in married, they, they have a, a married or not. Yeah. And sometimes, yeah, so now they said married or not. And now I met someone said married and living with your spouse, or the spouse is living somewhere. So, so another one. Yes. And how long? Married. Can you choose? Can you set you will choose? Amen. You will settle. Amen. If you walk to the first class church, you see more beautiful ones. Hey. Different chicken. This one is Portuguese chicken. This one is grilled chicken. This one is fried chicken. This one is boiled chicken. This one is chicken with feathers. Uh, chicken without feathers. Huh? Golden fried chicken. Saute chicken. Chicken nuggets. Sweet and sour chicken. Hot and spicy chicken. Sejuan chicken. Chicken with black beans. Hey! Which of the chickens are you going to choose? So usually, a person's spiritual life begins climbing when he has the ability to choose one. I said, I choose the Sejuan chicken, the one over there, that's Sejuan chicken. Although I can see chicken with black bean sauce on the side, I'll take the Sejuan chicken. And I like, it's okay. I'll take it. Chicken curry. You may be going back with your Sejuan chicken and you see somebody coming with chicken curry with the steam coming up. <gasps> and you want to run back and go and put it back and go and change to chicken curry. It's too late too late. You've got to choose one of the chickens. 
Brothers, are you listening or you can't listen to what I'm saying? And sisters, as a sister or as a chicken, that's why they call you chicks. Yeah! You see now? That's why they call the chicks. That chicky fine or you don't fine? Shh. Listen, listen. Listen. Quiet. Quiet so that I can preach. I'm just ending. What I'm saying is as a sister or as a chicken or a chick. Try to make yourself either hot and spicy, Sejuan, chicken nuggets, golden fried. Do something. You see, because we have two types of flowers insect pollinated flowers or wind pollinated flowers. You will be an insect pollinated flower. Insect pollinated flowers have beautiful petals nice smell beautiful features and they attract the insects the wind pollinated they don't have a good character only the wind can pollinate them you will be an insect pollinated flower in the name of Jesus There is no one under the sound of my voice who will struggle to get married. The prophecy you believe is the prophecy that will come to pass. When, listen, listen, shh, when your time comes and it's time to pollinate one of the flowers. God will give you wisdom. But maybe a time will come then the sister may ask, you are you seem to be taking your time. So yes. Yes. It's because of my blood vision. Yes. I'm trying to see well. I need some time to see what I'm seeing. What I'm the gentleness I'm seeing, is it a real gentleness? The soft voice I'm hearing, is it a soft voice? Or is it a church voice I'm hearing in the church? The beautiful face I'm seeing, is it a real beautiful face? Huh? Or if we bath your face now, the whole face will change. If we bath your face now, would the face change? Would the face change? Shh. Or if we hold your head just now, we will it remove. Listen, your first wisdom is the wisdom that Solomon started. That's the start now with women. Yeah, it's a young man. How to choose one. One. And stay. Stay with one that you've chosen. Usually you see the people who are pastors from that. The people who are becoming ministers. You see it from. So chicken nuggets, come. I go with you. Oh, uh, golden fried chicken. Uh, uh, masala chicken. Come. Say, Juan, let's go. Yes. That is, is, it, shows, it shows something. That is why Solomon, Proverbs, shh, Proverbs 1, 2, 3, all those are, wisdom is the principle. It's all the three, four. Wisdom on the right hand is riches, the left hand is long. Three, four. Proverbs 1, 2, 3, 4. From five, he starts to give advice. That's why I said this one is wisdom five. And the first thing is women's. 
Woman's. Woman's. Yeah. One day a pastor saw a certain woman. I said he was going to marry. I said, which church is she from? So he mentioned a certain church whose name begins with, it doesn't begin with, it doesn't begin with L, it doesn't begin with P, it doesn't begin with, huh? It doesn't begin with F. It begins after it begins after L. Yeah, after L. So I said, ah, a person whose church begins after L. Does the person speak in terms? Oh, no. I said, I thought you said you wanted to be a missionary or a pastor. The person you've gone to marry, even tongues. No tongues. You're going to marry a no tongues. But the way the my fan shapes were moving. <laughs> Waterfall. The way he saw it, he said, Charlie, I need this. Wow. And you see, you give yourself to, to cruelty. Shh. Give yourself to cruelty for years and years and years. Sisters, decide I will never be cruel. All this preaching you see, you know, one time one of our young first love people got married. She started being cruel almost immediately. I said, look at this one. You see, you hear the preach. You, you see, you think you are laughing. Show, hey, hey, hey. Started just after. I said, oh, why? You see the husband quiet like a mouse. Said, oh. I've signed my years to cruelty. And in the church, you see them singing beautiful. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. After marrying, all my preaching, look, shh. All my preaching is based on what I've seen it before. It's not an imagination. If I haven't seen it, I wouldn't even have the windows or even it wouldn't even occur to me that this verse can be true. I just read it like a parable. It's what I have seen it practically. Wickedness. Because you are the moving chicken and it's like your human being, is, your niceness is needed. You come to a house, a person has made the face squeeze. No talking, no smile, no pleasantness. Huh? Some of you, you see, that's why we, when we stay with you for some time, we will see your face, your true face. After that, we'll just, you just, shh, quiet. you just see the person. You look at you see, huh? That's the real one. When the person is not watching, that's the real one. Yes, the real face, the face, mind. Yeah. So listen, the preaching and preaching, there's nothing. First love, first love, church, marry. Officiate wedding, they go, they start immediately. You you marvel. You say that ah, how would you do that? You will never do that. Amen. If anyone wants to be a, a bishop, he should be the husband. Like that is it. If it was not for being in the ministry, even polygamy, let's not make any comment about that. But somebody, I asked one Christian, one guy who's a Christian, he said, how, how do you have, he had, a, he had eight wives. I asked him, how do you have eight wives? He said, oh, it's the Bible. I said, what do you mean? He said, oh, Solomon, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David. I'm following those people who, through faith and patience, inherit their promises. <laughs> but you see, you want to be a bishop. You want to be a minister. Isn't it? So it's like, in your case, you can't have everything. Yes. You can't have everything. That's one of the prices you're going to pay. If it's a chicken stew. We didn't have even chicken stew so far. Grilled chicken. This one is chicken nuggets. It's very small. This one is dancing spicy chicken. This one 
to be chicken with chicken wings. She's flying. This one to be chicken with granite soup. This one chicken with black bean sauce. You will get a good chicken. Hey, so every brother you see walking home with his wife is actually walking with his plate of chicken. I said, chicken, let's go home. And he's going with his chicken. Hey. Is it not true? He's holding his chicken. And as he's holding his chicken, he's going. Some chickens are saying, and some are moving, and some are, are pretending to be dead. Some are pretending to be there. Some of the chickens said they are not feeling well. Some of the chickens, instead of being hot, they are cold. Ice cold chicken. Yes. Is it true or not true? So everybody is going home with his chick. Or his chicken. Ask the nearest sister, what kind of chicken are you? Where is, where is Frank? Frank. Uh, sit down. You are blocking some people's view. Is it Frank? He's come to lead prayer. When he finishes, what does he need? Chicken! Hey. So, <laughs> if after church he's holding his plate, and we say, Brother Frank, are you okay? He said, I'm okay, but my chicken is frozen. Will you be happy for him? Yes. Look. Shh. One day, I watched a film of penguins. Penguins. Do you know penguins? Have you seen some before? They stand up like this. They, they are beds who stand up like this and walk. And do you know where they... Shh, do you know where... If you don't take care, you will hear what I'm saying. You know? Do you know where they were? They, were? They, were, they swim in the sea. And then they come to the Arctic circle. And they walk towards the, the North Pole or the South Pole, one of them. And you see the weather, the weather is. Those of you who have not been to a winter environment before, you wouldn't really understand the message. Yeah. But you'll be, you'll be traveling soon. So. Yeah. Listen, oh. listen. It's Easter, so we are, we are closing. But listen, the penguins. So I saw them. They go together. They give birth and they keep the egg on the toes. And they, they hold it like this. And they hold the egg. And then they stand in one place. And they all come together. Then the wind starts to blow. A human being can never live there. <laughs> Minus 50 degrees. And they will be in it like that. And I was feeling sorry for them. 
And God told me, don't feel sorry for them. They, that is what, they, what is good for them. They like it. If you bring them here to this weather, you see that they are all fainted outside on the courtyard. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to say is not that that frozen chicken is not good, but it's good for someone. So that, that froze, freezing weather, <laughs> They come there every year. They can go anywhere, but they come there. The wind will be blowing. And they will up and stand. They love it. They give birth and they hold it in, on their toes. Ice. Look, when we say cold, if the weather is um, if the weather is uh, if the weather is about 10 or 8 is cold. If the weather is 4, 3, it's very cold. But when it comes to 0, it's freezing. Air condition room is 26 or 18 maximum. 18. It doesn't even get to 18 in this kind of weather. Yeah. We're talking about 0, then minus 1, minus 2, to minus 50. That is suitable for them. So that depressive sister is suitable for maybe there's an equally a depressive brother with a face that can challenge the face that is coming from that sister. Very wild face. Huh? Yes. <laughs> versus power. Power for power. Iron sharpened iron. You meet your meter. You meet your what? Your meter. Yes. That maybe it's a very friendly, happy brother who is flowing, chatting with everybody and you have gone for a certain ice Penguin, you have gone for a penguin sister who's into ice. She's into ice weather without moving. You see that it isn't compatible. You should have gone for something like that. Yeah. Are you listening? So, that is a blessing for you. You can rather show your wisdom. You hear me? Show your wisdom. This is your wisdom. That's when a brother comes and says, oh, this is my beloved, immediately see his wisdom. Proverbs 5, wisdom 5. Straight. So, this is my beloved. I've chosen this one, this one, this one. And the person does, marries the person, all those. It shows a certain type of person. Straight away. But so, okay, now I've got another sister. <laughs> This one, okay. I've got another one. I've got another. Of course, you should break up rather than marrying a penguin if you are not into ice. You get what I'm saying? If you are not into ice, break up quickly. Yes, you are a tropical brother and you go and marry an, a penguin. It's not going to work. I see you choosing the right Jamaican one in Jesus' name. Hey. Yeah. First thing. So now you see, Brother Frank. We are all waiting to see your wisdom. The one you choose is the revelation of your wisdom. Yes. What you can choose is a revelation of your wisdom. How many understand wisdom five? Don't choose a stranger. Don't come someone. Hey, we have a sister from Begro. She's come uh, last week Friday. We went to see you. She's my auntie's cousins, nephews, nieces, sisters, daughters, friends, aunties, the last daughter. Tell your neighbor, strangers are not welcome. You will never get a stranger in Jesus' name. Why don't you want a stranger? Why don't you want a stranger? Huh? Danger. 
day, one day, a brother, I'm close. I'm, I'm look, we've closed. A, a brother, a brother told me, not that somebody told. He told me. He said, look. When I came from my country, I came, I met this lady outside and I took her to the house. And we had whatever. We could be a beer, a war. <laughs> then, after that, <laughs> are you still here? Yes. Are you still there? Yes. He said, in the night, he woke up. He himself told me. He said, he felt, he, he was, And he felt something cold. Cold. Not a penguin. Not a penguin. It's not a, these are not penguins. So he looked. And from here. Downwards was a fish. A fish. Here downwards was a fish. He was frightened. You see, you should be afraid of strange people. Fish. Listen. Wait. Wait. Are you hearing? One day I was at church Thursday. It was a Thursday. We had ministry meetings. Then I had a call. Let's go. Bishop, Pastor, what is it? I said, I'm coming. I went down, took my car. What is it? After Thursday meeting, I was coming out of the gate and a sister stopped. I said, Would you like a lift? I said, Yeah. She got into the car, sat at the back. Because the way the car was going out of the gate, she sat at the back. As they were going, she said, ah, the girl is quiet. Is She's a quiet type, the penguin type. <laughs> Doesn't talk much. So she looked back. She was not in the car. She was not in the car. Oh, now they're beautiful. As of one, it's not a real person. Yeah. Listen. So, brothers and sisters, be careful. So, I had to go to the house. I didn't know what. We opened the car. Opened the boot. All the four doors. The person has evaporated. From a car, a moving car. I tell you, you'll be afraid. So, Frank, we don't need strangers. Huh? And all of you guys, the chickens you need are all around here. Stand to your feet, everybody. All right. Father, thanks a million for your word today. We are, we are blessed to come into your house. Deliver us from evil. May we never give our ears to the cruel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As every head is bowed and every eye. Now, being a servant, one day I heard Derek Prince preaching a message. The message is, was entitled, Being a Servant. Yeah, Being a Servant. And he explained that being a servant is a very great thing. And that Jesus Christ, that God, Jesus Christ himself, is called a servant. So to be a servant is not a derogatory word. 
or a derogatory thing. It is actually a great thing that even Jesus himself is called a servant. Then he described something in the message. He was talking about his daughters. He said his daughters have been to some school and that instead of coming from the school with a sense of being servants, they came from the school with a sense of entitlement. Yes. Of I am this, I can do this, I am going to be this, I am that, I am not below, I am great, I am this and I am that. But not I am a servant. He was talking about his children. Yeah. I think I also know a school like that. <laughs> or some schools like that. So, instead of seeing being a servant and being a servant of God as a derogatory thing or something negative, you see, which is how slaves think. When you ask them to do something, are you trying to push me down? Like, Nobody's trying to push you down. Yeah. 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 You can't come from your country and tell us. Don't talk to us like that. Sorry. We're just sharing the word with you. No, 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 don't do that. So instead of having a sense of it, that's why people are not happy in marriage. You go into marriage thinking, I thought that as a husband you do this. As a wife, this is what you, you hold my hand. You open the door. Forget about all those things. Just open the door yourself, okay? Just open the door. Pray for a car that you open the door for yourself. Stop all those things. You see, coming into a marriage with so many things that you expect to be done for you. Eh? You are set yourself up for unhappiness you will be very unhappy throughout your life. Wow. You always look and say, ah, what a man. Yay! The man I read about in Mills and Boone, and the man I read about in this book, and the one I saw, I saw in this film, he was so gentle, so nice, so this, and this and that. This is what I should receive. I should have surprises. I should have nice things. I should be pampered. I should be as a lady. As a what? Are you a lady? When you go to the toilet, the diamonds come out of you. Do diamonds come out? Huh? I'm asking that when you go to the toilet, is it diamonds that come out? <laughs> like you hear the sound, ka, 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 pa, pra, pa, pa. and it is diamonds that are falling onto the ceramic. <laughs> or when you go to the toilet, is it the smell of Gucci or Yves Saint Laurent that is coming out there? Let's be serious. Instead of coming with a mind of what I am worth and how I am a princess, I am a queen, I'm a, I'm a delicate lady, you know, we women are delicate and we, we are those, we need, the, you need nothing, you need to work hard, you need to get up early in the morning, you have to bath, you need to learn how to cook, you need to cook, you need to learn how to have sex. Shame on you. Look, I don't want you to be sad. I want you to be a happy person. When you come into the house of God, don't come with what God has to do for you. God has to give me a Benz. God has to give me a nice beloved. God has to give me 10 million. God has to give me this. Oh, it's what I have to serve. That's when you'll be happy in the house of God. The same thing, when you go into marriage, you go, so I have to learn, I have to do this. I have to do this. I'm now going to work. Marriage, you see it as a job. Older women who have been married for something, they don't see marriage as all this. 
flimsy things you are talking about. They see it as hard work. That's why even sometimes you see an, sometimes older when they are widows and somebody is proposing to them, you want to marry me, they laugh and say, me, I should come and be a nurse. You see, they see it as nursing. They see it as, I mean, servant, servant, being a servant, being a nurse, being some other a cook, some other job. But the younger ones, they feel that, oh, I'm going to be pampered and, you know, they're going to, you know. I'm going to have surprises. On my birthday, I will be there. Then suddenly when I turn to the right, there will be 200 people with balloons and they'll be saying, happy birthday! We love you! We love you! Surprise! Let us be servants. Serious servants. Sit down. Let's do this servant thing. Tell someone, let's do this servant. Let's do this servant thing. Eh? We are doing this servant thing. Today, I just want to share something for people who are not married. So, if, if, you, if you are already married, you can take out your offering and let me pray by it so that you give it again. And then you can go. And then it has mainly to do with the brothers who are not married. So, that is, that is the main thing. So please, I know that doesn't apply to most of you. How many does it apply to? All right. How many does it not apply to? Huh? But how can it apply to you if you are already married? You can teach others. All right. Father, we thank you for your blessing tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Right. Choices. Okay. Number one. I'm going to share with you seven types of women you must not marry. <laughs> That's right. Okay. That's what I was explaining. I think you should take out your offering. Those of you who are married... Lift up your hand and let's pray. All right. Now, there are many dangers for a young man who wants to live happily ever after. Isn't it? Now, when you are a young man, you are full of sexual feelings. Is it not true? So, the reason why this message is important, okay, is because um, when you are a young man, or maybe a young lady too, interested in sex, you get it? Your sexual needs, physiological needs, <laughs> it guides you, but you don't even know that it is guiding you. And what I'm explaining is the principal reason why many times people go and get themselves 
something painful for their lives. Yes. Because Proverbs 27 verse 7 says that a satisfied man loathes honey. He doesn't like even honey. You see. But to a hungry man every bitter thing is sweet. get it? To, as I'm explaining why sometimes you, you don't understand who somebody has chosen to marry. Uh-huh. Do you get what I'm saying? It's like, what have you gone to get? What type of beast are you bringing? It is because of this verse. You see, those, yes, the Bible tells us that when a man is satisfied, a, a sated man, this one says, okay, or a new King James says, a satisfied soul, a full soul, loads, he, 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 when he sees the honey, it's like, what is this? He's not impressed. But a hungry man, to a hungry soul. <laughs> every, every bitter thing is sweet. Hey! So before you realize so, the person has gone to get something bitter. So, because of hunger. Because of desire. Sometimes you ask yourself, this guy, what is wrong with him? What is he going to get? You are immunizing us. Yes. This is powerful. What is, he, what is he doing? It's going to spoil his life. And that's why sometimes you see people after they have married, you see them. They are now they are now satisfied. <laughs> they are satisfied. Even the honey does not appeal to them. But when they were hungry, it not even, we don't even get to honey. Bitter chloroquine is what they want. Hey. And this is the reason which leads sometimes the most spiritual God-loving people into something so bitter that the rest of their lives are colored by the bitter thing they were attracted to when they were hungry. And the hunger made them interpret the bitter as sweet and the bitter as eatable. Sometimes you advise people before they get married. They will even be angry with you. They will even hate you for what you are saying. Because you can see, brother, when you enter the house and you are satisfied, you ask yourself that me at all, me at all, what was in my mind? You see the person walking in front of you and you'll be annoyed. What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? What have I connected myself to? So, young, young brothers, you see, and sisters too, 
Yeah. Your, your hunger for love, it, it affects you. And that is why the marriages which are arranged by parents are more lasting than this hunger parade. <laughs> You see the people. You are going to get married. Why are you getting married? This is all. I feel them. I feel something. Whoosh. You see, I remember when I saw my beloved at first. Like I remember a particular day I was walking down a particular hill somewhere. And I, was, I thought about her. And I felt something. Hey. And I remember the place that I had that feeling. So I was asking the Lord, that feeling is such a different feeling that it means that this is the love that I'm supposed to follow. You see, but I was a little wiser than that. I decided that I would not follow that love. Yeah. Charlie. Men and men have seven types of women. Seven types. Know your women. I've written know your men. Now I'm going to. No, you're really. <laughs> okay. So, number one. So, ask for advice for those who have seen certain things already. Just ask. Say, Pastor, what do you see? What do you see? Okay, number one, make sure you don't marry any woman until you see the evil in the woman. Now, I told you that you should give your offering and go because this is just young brothers. The young brother's message. Until you see evil in the woman, you are blind. You don't know what you are going to marry. Proverbs 27. (laughs) Verse 12. A prudent man sees the evil ahead. He, no, it doesn't say he sees the evil ahead. It says a prudent man sees evil. He sees evil. You see, you are walking, you haven't seen anything bad. You have just seen ties. <laughs> You have just seen hips, bottoms, breasts, and you are moving with energy. And you haven't seen anything evil. Then you haven't seen well. Yeah. A prudent man sees evil and hides himself. Every woman or man. I say, it's for, I told you. It's for, I have done know your men. It's now know your women. But you can, you can turn it around. And some of you, you may be married, but one day you may have to remarry. Not that, not that you divorce, but maybe your wife or your husband will die. Uh, so you can, uh, you can take the notes. I mean, I mean, this is a measure that applies to Bishop Saki today. Because he's, he's about to register as a beloved with a registration. To marry 
somebody you haven't seen anything bad about the person before. It's an angel that you've seen. Uh, <laughs> Anybody you are going to marry, you must know the evil you are going to get from that person. You must know that this person, when I marry this person, number one, this. Number two, this. Number three, this. I. All these are coming from the person. Go and ask the person's sisters whether they quarrel, whether they cook before they saw you, whether they bath. about you is true. With time, it will be proved right. One day, I was going to marry my beloved and my mother-in-law told me something. She said, oh, I, every time I tell her something to, uh, to whatever, she doesn't remember. And I told my mother, and oh, no, no, no. It's not like that at all. She remembers everything. <laughs> huh? yeah. The Bible says to the hungry man, every bitter thing is sweet. But as the years went by, I saw that what my mother-in-law said was true. Yeah. So one day my wife said, oh, I forgot. Then she said, my mother told you, don't come to me. I forgot. My mother told you. Hey! Sometimes you see mothers rebuking daughters as if they don't even like them. Hey, they, 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 they. That's why the daughters, they like their fathers. The father doesn't quarrel with them about anything. The mother is always facing. Because the mothers are not impressed. They are, they don't, they are not impressed. They can see. They see themselves. They face. You are going to marry, you haven't seen anything bad. Oh, he's very handsome. He's very charming. He really likes chatting with me. He's very funny. He's spiritual. He loves the Lord. Hey. He loves the Lord. <laughs> loving the Lord is different from loving you. I said, loving the Lord is different from loving somebody like you. That, that's why we sang that song. Love somebody like you and somebody like me. Hey. Just to think that I was so bad that you knew all about my past. Aha, you knew. But that didn't make you any different. You said you could fix all of that. I got so excited till my heart nearly skipped a beat. It feels so good to be understood. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes it causes me to tremble. Sometimes it causes me 
has a big mirror for the ladies. We have just come as we are. They have gone to look in the mirror. have done so many things. They look so nice. Masquerade. They are masquerading. Mascara. That's where it comes from. Mascara. Roll down their head, did a little something, make themselves look a little fresh. But when they get home, they don't make themselves a little fresh for you. They don't make themselves a little fresh. You have to have the old one. The smelly one. Hey. The beauty of the lady masks the reality that the person is ill-natured. Cantankerous means ill-natured and quarrelsome. There are very beautiful girls. They are very, very quarrelsome and very ill-natured. Ill-natured. Yeah. So you just see that she's a very beautiful. She's very calm. She's very quiet. I mean, when people speak to me, they, all, they have a very humble voice when they speak. Yes, Bishop. Yes, Daddy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When I hear, I say, mm -hmm. <laughs> Is this the real boy? Sometimes when I call, they don't know it's me. So, yes, what? I said, it's me. Say, oh, Daddy, Daddy, Bishop. Uh -huh. Sorry, sorry. I thought it was uh, so and so. Hmm. Don't be deceived by the beauty. It masks the fact that some of them are very unwilling sexual partners. Irritated, unwilling. Sometimes the most beautiful girls are the most terrible sexual partners. Their beauty is just an act of something that they do for themselves, for self-satisfaction. To look now, I want to look good. And they come. When they go home, one day I said, brother asked the, the wife, I said, pastor, I said, so your duty, your main duty is to be a dead body. When, when we are having this, your main Christian duty is that your main duty is to be a dead body. Hey! Hmm. Wickedness. Their beauty masks their 
wicked ways towards house help cousins they will be wicked towards your fa- your family members when they see your family members their attitude will change and they will say hey, your mother doesn't this your father this your, your sister that your cousin this your sisters and your people your people yes. hey. and you see the beautiful thing Praise the Lord. And when we praise and worship, these two hands like this. Yeah. I worship you, Jehovah. I worship you, Jehovah. I worship you, Jehovah. Yeah. When they see the relatives, yeah. I. So you better see the evil. You don't just yourself. I've got a beloved. I'm going to marry. Charlie, there is something somewhere. One day I was telling a certain brother who had got a certain perfect beloved. I said, she's too perfect. There's something wrong somewhere. You cannot be too good. Especially people who always smile. Why are you always smiling? How can you always be smiling? How can you always be happy? One day, a certain brother saw a certain beautiful and I didn't understand until one day I saw the picture of the girl. And I said, wow, what a beautiful girl. But it had, it had masqueraded the facts, the facts that were behind. Sometimes the beautiful spirituality, you lay hands on them, they fall down. So, whoosh. She's receptive to the tips of your fingers. But it, 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 it masquerades the stubbornness. Beautiful face, oh, but stubborn, stubborn. I would say, therefore, I've given them over to their stubbornness. Psalm, Psalm 77 or Psalm 82. Hey. Beautiful ties. Hiding the stubbornness. Charm. Hides so many things. So, brothers and sisters, especially the brothers. Make sure, number one, you see some evil. Number two, make sure you don't marry an odious woman. Odious. Hey. If you describe someone as odious, you mean that they are extremely unpleasant. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 21. Prophesy that your house is going to be an earthquake. Under three things, the earth quakes. <laughs> hey! That's what I'm giving you seven types of things. A woman that you haven't seen anything evil in the person before. Don't marry that person. Number two, an odious woman. Your house is going to be a perpetual earthquake on the Richter scale 7.7. Under three things, the earth quakes. And under four, it cannot bear up. Number one, under a slave, when he becomes a king. When a slave becomes a king, it's not easy for the country. (laughs) For the earth. The earth will be shaking. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 27. And a fool, when he is satisfied with food. And number 20, verse 23, under an unloved woman, you see, odious is used in the King James, but American says, an unloved woman when she gets a husband. Hey. And a maidservant when she takes over from her mistress. These are things that cause earthquakes. Now, if you marry an unloved woman, see, there are many ways you can look at, at it. Many people who are unloved know that they are unloved. Nobody likes them. Nobody hugs them. And they sense it. And they feel it. When, and sometimes when people are unpleasant and catastrophic, and somebody makes the mistake of marrying that person, huh, Bible speaks of a quaking. Yeah. You know, sometimes you, you, but you see, some of the person is very beautiful, very nice, and in your hunger, as a young man, the bitter thing, 
you look at it, honestly, me, I'll tell you personally, sometimes when I know people eh, and then I see them, I can't correlate the two. Yeah. The, the, the niceness of the person and then the other side. Yeah. It's very well. Because beauty, beauty, it, it, it's, it's just like, it's, it's like a shell. Yeah. It's like a shell. So, brothers, Charlie, I pray for you. <laughs> so that's why advice is very important. Number three, make sure that you don't marry a jealous woman. A jealous woman. Now, a jealousy, I'm reading from the dictionary, is when, when a woman is jealous, she often feels angry because she thinks that another person is trying to take her lover away from her. Jealousy is also feeling angry or unhappy because somebody you like is showing interest in somebody else. When somebody you love, like I love Oko, but Oko is, show, Pastor Oko is showing interest in Pastor Aso, and I don't like it. Or let's say, my wife loves me, but I'm showing interest in Miranda, and she doesn't like that. Now, you're going to be a pastor, and you're marrying a jealous woman? And this is jealousy? This is the definition of jealousy? When a pastor's work is to show interest in people. Huh? The pastor's work is to show interest in other people. And you have married somebody who cannot stand that. You have married the wrong person. Now, Proverbs 27 is a severe warning. Proverbs 27 verse 4 it says wrath is fierce and anger is a flood. Proverbs 27. But who can stand before jealousy? Which husband can stand before jealousy? Which pastor can survive? Who can survive? Very few can survive. Yeah. Very few. Me have advice just as a friend. Me have advice as a friend. That's why I said these are for people that are not married. But if you are already connected to this jealous person, who can stand? Charlie, you need heavy duty reinforcement. To be able to stand. Or a man who is not happy about his wife's hey. friendships hey. Hey. with other people, sometimes in the church. Every time. Who are you calling? Let me check your phone. Who are you uh, 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 speaking to? You have sent a message. I love you. Ah, how can you say I love you? <laughs> You have received a, a, a letter, a text. Who are these? I miss you. Who is missing you at this stage? <laughs> but you see, what I'm saying doesn't sound much for an uninformed and an unexperienced person. It will interest you to know that Jesus Christ was crucified because of jealousy. The force that brought his end was jealousy. Nothing less than jealousy. In Mark chapter 15, he says that for Pilate knew that for envy they had delivered him up. So, it's like an angry woman is better than a jealous woman. It is better to get a gun woman who is always angry than a jealous woman. Hey. Uh, who can stay? Who can stay? One day a certain brother was standing at the bus stop 
waiting for a bus, waiting for a car. Suddenly, his wife came to the bus stop. When, he got to the, when she got to the bus stop, there were some other people standing there. She went to sort them out. And he was watching her. Why? Why? She said that he was interested in the girls at the bus stop. Who can stand? Who can stand? You cannot stand. Showing an interest. One guy was in the house with his wife. And a certain car was passing. Then the car passed. Then he was there. Now he said that. That was a signal, wasn't it? He said, what signal? The car that was flashing the light, was it not a signal? Was it not a message? Who can stop? One day, a certain pastor was in the house with his wife. And suddenly the wife said, hey, You now are in love with a married woman, isn't it? Hey, you are. You are. You are confess it. You are in love with the worship leader. Who can stand? Tell the truth. All the things I'm saying, they sound like jokes. But there is not even half percent of joke in what I'm saying. The day that you see it, you will tell me that, Bishop, I was there. You gave seven points. And I saw it. But she was so beautiful. When I saw her breast jumping behind the dress, could see like something like jelly, jelly, jellyfish with ripples. And I could feel, I said, oh, shabless, all the things that Bishop are saying are not true. Because of the hunger, the bitterness. Now, that is why you need long relationships. Yeah, yeah. You have to be in a long, all these things I'm saying, you cannot see it. Unless you are in a long relationship. When you are in a relationship for some years. Yeah. Do you get it? That's where you will see. You will see an unloved woman. Yeah. You will see jealousy. Yeah. You see an odious woman. You will see the evil that is there. Yeah. Uh-huh. But when you come, you, you come and say, Shibash. Shibash. Brown and black. Shibash. Brown and black. Shibash. Stand up. I see brown and black. Stand. Stand up. Brown and black. I've seen somebody brown and black after church. I believe this is the one. This is the one. Brown and black. But within this nice lady pastor that I have standing here, there are some blades. There are some little uh, uh, what do you call it? What do you call that little knife? Daggers. And I think she's nice, she's beautiful, she's in brown and black. She's, she's got revelation. But I tell you, some, there's some blade somewhere. But you've you got to be around for some time. Ladies and gentlemen, you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> hey. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, are you understanding what I'm talking about? But when you are full of hunger, you may just go. But you say, you must know, you must know. I say, yes, I know. Like, like the song said, you saw, you knew all about me, and you loved me. Just the way in spite of. But you just can say, oh, I love you. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. You are a fool. Sit down. Okay, okay. How many do you have? Number four. Hey. Hmm. 
One day, a pastor has married a jealous woman. One day he came and said, you know, Bishop, I want to say something. If I'm able to stay, if I'm able to stay, if I'm able to stay to the end with this person, it is the same as winning any number of souls in the world. It is the same. If I'm only able to stay, I have done the work of God. This is a man of God speaking. He says, when he said that, if I am able to stay to the end that I didn't leave her, she didn't leave me. I have done the work of God. It is the same as any number of the soul. You, Bishop, can be mentioned if I'm able to stay with this jealous woman. I... This is the work of an evangelist. And one day, a certain pastor was driving his car. When he reached a certain junction, he wanted to see whether a car was coming to the left or to the right. <laughs> you see, because we are taught, look left, look right, and then look left again. So when he turned his head, she shouted in the car, ha! What are you looking at? Are looking at your girlfriend's your girlfriend's house your girlfriend's school even the school that she went to so he developed a new format of driving you cannot look to the left you cannot look to the right and you cannot look to the left again straight who can stand that is why the pastor came and said, look, if I am able to stay, I, am, I have won every soul just that I am able to stay. That one is more than any soul that you have, you have been won. And follow up and everything. Hey! Hmm. Number four. Make sure you don't marry a woman who does not show her love. Oh, she does not show her love. Proverbs 27. Hmm. Verse 5. Better is open rebuke than love that is concealed. Love that is concealed. You are going to marry somebody who is going to conceal the love. Hey. It's better to marry somebody who will be rebuking you throughout than to marry someone who does not express her love for you. Oh! You don't feel it. You don't know it. The person says, oh, doesn't speak, doesn't talk, doesn't commit love, doesn't cook, doesn't say anything. Won't you speak? Express yourself. You can do it anywhere. They need to do it here. But now, the Bible says that it is better to be rebuked always. Just marry somebody who will be insulting you and rebuking you. Rebuking you and insulting you than to stay with somebody who has the love is hidden. You can't feel it. And you've married the person who's blank, blank. Blank check, no expression, no. You can't laugh. You don't speak. Ish. And it goes the other way.
way for man and woman. It might somebody doesn't speak. If you do your hair, they can't say. If you dress, they cannot say. And either way, it's like you are just deaf and dumb. Because it would have been better. Not that it would have, it is better to get somebody be rebuking you generally. Say, hey, hey, no, hey, hey, lizard, go away. This. Uh, than to be with somebody, the person is just there. Hey. So, you see, if you are in a relationship for some time, you will see all those things. Yeah. So every time you see a person cannot cook, he cannot make any effort. Because the person is not going to make any effort when you marry. So, uh, even but you see a person is fat, smelly, has sweated, we win everything. Combination of mucus, hands, and other forms of parasites, blood, and all. The person will be there. Things I'm saying are not jokes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no effort. Oh. No effort. This is what Dr. Ogo and I call post donation neglect. Post-donation. Yes. Post donation. After you have donated your sperm, then you just behave anyhow. E. T. You have to you have to marry somebody. Who will not just be there and then it's like the love is concealed inside the treasure box. Shut down. The person is there. Are you happy? Yes. Are you happy to be married to me? Yes. I told you I was happy to be married to you. I told you that I'm happy to be married to you. Do you like the food? Yes. Do you want to go out? I don't mind. Do you want to stay at home? I don't mind. What do you want to do? Nothing. Do you want to watch a film? I'm okay. When you put on a film. Oh. So what is the use of this person that I've come to marry? I told you a certain brother, he was having sex with a wife. And he asked the wife, and he reached a point, he has done all that he can do to self-motivate himself. And he asked the, he asked the lady that, ah, so you are tall. You, your duty in this thing is to be a dead body or what? What is your function here? Your main function is to just be a... He has tried every maneuver, self-motivation, self-inspiration, self-expression. Uh, and he reached he reach a point of final, no, uh, 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 total failure. He just asked, he said, so you are tall. You are tall. Your duty, what is your duty here? Your duty here is to be a dead body. In this, in this matter. Hey! It, 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 will, it will be better to find somebody to be rebuking you all the time. Oh, here this. Oh, here that. Uh-huh. So I feel some feeling in the house now. I feel some anger. I feel something. So I just quiet. Yeah, and it applies to the man too. I mean, that one drives the women more crazy. So the man is there quiet. As if you are a monument in London. <laughs> Oliver Cromwell. Or one of these statues. You are standing there. God in Gadisburg. Kotoka. You are standing there at the airport like that. Look, my, my wife was telling me, my wife was telling me, she said when she was growing up, they were taught, when, so when anybody comes, you, when like daddy comes or, or whoever you come, you have to run to the person, hug the person. You don't just stand and say, oh, you come here. Are you happy to see me? See, some of you are just waiting to show your, your love at a funeral. When a person dies, they say, <laughs> <laughs> ah, look. When the person was around, he couldn't even, here, here couldn't move, this place. Couldn't move. I said, this place couldn't move. Secret love. 
Your love is there by secret. It's covered. It's hidden. No expression. Oh. And when people come, visitors come, then yourself comes. Oh, hello. But it's not real. Charlie, me have a seven secret to. Now, number five. Make sure you don't marry a contentious woman. Because Proverbs 27 verse 15 it says what does it say? Constant dripping on a day of steady rain and a contentious woman are like yeah, that, that, that one is what we all know. It's the second part that we don't know. He who would restrain her restrains the wind and he grasps oil with his right hand. When you are, when you, you see now, a contentious woman, the word contentious means somebody who is likely to cause disagreements and someone likely to argue. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't define it. I got the definition from the dictionary of the meaning of the word contentious. It's somebody who is likely to disagree and somebody who is likely to argue. Yeah, so you may marry somebody and the person is always arguing with you. Uh, and number two, the person always disagrees when you say, let's go here. Say, no, I want to go here. And then you start to say, ah, does it mean because we are, we are, we are married that I don't have to think again? Does it mean because we are in a relationship, a relationship I have to be deaf and dumb? Oh. <laughs> Does it mean I shouldn't speak again? Th- th- those are the common statements that come forth. <laughs> Disagree and argue. You see some marriages. Argue. Hey, they become like the top enemies this life. One day a certain man, a certain man, he said something. He said, this thing that I have decided to do, my wife has agreed. And he said, the fact that my wife has agreed, it means that God is in it because she doesn't agree with anything that I'm doing. Ah, and you may think that it's just, just funny. That you will see that many marriages, they don't agree at all about almost anything that they do. Charlie, don't be deceived by the ties or oh, the jellyfish breast. Or hey. oh, the bontos. <laughs> yeah, I told you I'm preaching to brothers. May oh, brothers yeah. understand what I'm talking about. Sisters, Forgive me for anything that I'm saying that is not a palatable to you, but I'm, I'm telling you, contentious. No, so one of the things I thank God for my wife is that she agreed, she followed me, and all that. Of course, at times she disagrees and all that, but generally she agrees. And generally she flows. Yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here by now. Otherwise, by now, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Generally, she agrees. Of course, she's a normal person. You're two different people. You not agree on everything. But generally, you must agree. And generally, you must flow. Everybody has what we call a John Mark issue. John Mark is the person who divides very close people. Paul was very close to Barnabas. But over John Mark, they were separated. In every relationship, there is a John Mark case. And that case can separate very close people. And you have to be very careful when you see a John Mark. So that this thing is a John Mark type of issue. It has the power to separate close people. Hey. 
you listening to me? Yeah. And even in marriage, there are some dumb marks. They can separate marriage. That is very close. So watch out. Dumb mark issues. It may not be a person. It may be an issue. Now, there are some people, they are contentious. And if you have married one, your whole life, your life will be trying to catch the wind. Like this. I'm catching the wind. Let's catch. Everybody catch some wind. Have you caught some wind? Catch it. Uh-huh. You can't. Or the Bible says, somebody who is trying to catch oil in his right hand. All through your life, you will struggle, struggle. And it's never, and that is why as pastors, we learn Sometimes when we are doing marriage counseling at a certain level, we just listen to what they are saying, but we don't say anything. Because we know that the man is trying to catch the wind. He's trying to, he's trying to let the person understand. She will never understand. One day I told a certain brother who was trying to do I said, brother, it will never change. You, you got the wrong one. You married a contentious woman. She always disagrees with you. And she always argues. She will never see. So I told the brother, I said, accept it. Learn how to be happy with it. That's the only, you don't, have, you, don't have, you don't have any hope. There will be never a change. You are doomed till you die to live with a disagreeing, arguing person. You are doomed to your death. Until death do you part. You will only be sad. So instead of wasting your time trying to catch a wind, learn how to adapt, to stay. Yeah. One day I was watching some lions and they were chasing some buffaloes. For about six, if they were chasing other animals, about six days, they couldn't get anyone to catch. Yeah, six days. And they were very hungry. Every day they go hunt. You see the animals as if they are very weak. But they cannot catch them. You see, sometimes when you are faced with an impossible enemy, you have to develop strategies. So those, you see the lion, they eat only the buffalo. Can you imagine you are here and I'm here? You are my food. All that I think of you is you are my food. Do you understand? But the buffaloes, they have developed. And the lions were rather decreasing. The people who made the film were saying that the lions are decreasing. And they are getting fewer. It takes a team of the lions to catch one. And they try. When the buffaloes are sleeping in the night, they join together and they form a circle like that. Yeah, they form a circle. As if intelligent, they just form a circle and they stand there and they sleep with their horns. And if they catch one, the other buffaloes will chase the lion. You see a lion running away from a, a cow. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that maybe you have married a contentious one or you, you are in an island with a lion. Charlie, develop a strategy. The lion can never eat you. But you must know that you are doomed. You are doomed. It will never change. It will never change. You are doomed. You must learn how to work when you are doomed. Mercy. Number six. Make sure you don't marry a foolish woman. Why? Because Proverbs 27 verse 22. It said, Though you pound a fool, you pound a fool in the mortar. With a pestle. <laughs> Don't you pound a fool in a mortar with a pestle along with crushed grains, yet his foolishness or her foolishness will not depart from him. Hey! <laughs> yeah! You see, you've gone to marry a foolish person. Now, what is a foolish woman? A foolish woman is someone whose ability to think is limited. The dictionary tells us that a foolish person does not show a good sense of judgment. Sometimes you see the foolish person, the person cannot understand when you speak. He says, submit. He says, why should I submit? I'm not a human being. See, it, it takes higher thought to understand the importance of submission. When you are foolish, you can't relate with some of these things. When they say, have sex, when they say, do this, when they say, bad, it's like, why? Let him also do The men should also do As for the everyday this, the pastor is a man. That is why he's teaching about it. So your thinking is up to a point. 
Uh -huh. When we say limited, it means that when it gets to a place, it stops. Uh -huh. You think I then reach a certain barrier, I can't work in. Uh -huh. And the Bible says that when you are married to a fool, hmm? though you pound him or her, quarrels, pointing out, explaining, pastoral counseling, beating, threatens of divorce, everything, it does not change the person, although you pound a fool with a mortar and with a pestle in a mortar, it does not change the foolishness. So don't waste your time. A lot of marriage cases are doomed. You just have to learn how to stay with a fool. Adapt like a porcupine. Adapt like an eagle. Find a strategy for surviving. Have you ever wondered when an older person is, maybe the wife is dead, he's going to remarry. It doesn't go for these young, young girls. Bishop Saki didn't come. A lot of little, little girls here. You realize that your thinking is up to a place. And then it's finished. You need to suffer a bit in this life. Understand some things. Yeah. That's why you, you see that the person, at first I used to think that, oh, the person is going to marry, you just go and get the most juiciest looking 18 year old person whose uh, ties are very rubbery and the uh, bottles are very like silicon and the breasts are just like uh, this uh, jellyfish and so on. No, 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 no. You see that the person, it, it, because you, you have realized as you go through life that Though you beat a, a fool in a mortar, you pound with a pestle eh, along with the grain, the police state does not go out of the person. So it is very dangerous to marry a fool. And the Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. So the younger you are, the more foolishness there is in you. And the older you go, the less foolishness is in you. And that's why when you are a bit experienced, you get a little older. You realize that the older you are, you are more calm, mellow, cooler, mature. You speak carefully. Don't take things for granted. We are all getting older now. That Reverend Eastwood has experienced, I mean, his house is here, they are buried them here. When you wake up, these are the people, your children. Instead of being in their rooms, they are in the, much in the, in the grave. It comes all of us. All of us are afraid. We are all terrified as to who is next and what is next. What is the next thing that we are going to hear? It calms you down. You don't speak. It's principles of life, number one, this. If you want to have a long life, seven steps to a long life. Foolish people don't live long, but God is showing you how to live long. Number one, this. Number two, this. Number three, say, look. Charlie, take it with time, please. Take it with time. A little experience will show you that there are more factors and those are your seven steps that you are teaching. Hey! Are you listening to me? So make sure you don't marry a foolish woman. And the last of all, the last point. Make sure you don't marry someone who will not live with you. Who will not live with you? Who will not follow you? Who will not come to you? Why do I say that? Because the Bible says in Proverbs 27 verse 10. Do not go to your brother's house in the day of calamity. Better is a neighbor who is near than a brother who is far away. What is the use of bread you cannot eat? Car you cannot drive. Money you cannot use. Wife who is far away. A woman you cannot touch. The Bible says even your neighbor who you have no ties with, no genetic or blood relation is better. That neighbor is of more use to you than this legally whatever person who is somewhere else. Yeah. What is the use of your mind when you are, you are in Brekusu? Or you are in Brekum, or you are wherever, and your wife is. What is the use of that? Somebody who is arise of more use than that legal that you have signed agreement with. The person is holding your ring and everything has used you as a signatory to sign sign things, and the person is now somewhere. What is the use of? What is the use of the marriage? A 
a neighbor, a neighbor who is not related to you from another country. Me, my neighbors, they are not from Ghana. The neighbors of my, my neighbor, they are, not, they are not even Ghanaians. Yeah, they are Nigerians. But the Bible says that those Nigerians next door are of more importance to me than my brothers or sisters who are in another country. Yeah. So this is your legally married wife who is in America whilst you are here. What is the use of her? What is the use? Is that God has sent you to a mission to say, yeah. Oh yeah, where? Come on, let's go. We are going. I oh, don't get it. Yeah. So marry somebody. See, my wife followed me. Yeah. She was going to England. She was doing. I said, please, we are here. And she came. Uh-huh. It's of use to me. Something I can hold and then experience. Yeah. One brother said, you know, my wife is not around. So I take the picture and I've been kissing the picture. <laughs> been kissing pictures. It's when you are beloved that you kiss pictures. But when you are married that you kiss the real thing. Stand to your feet and let us pray. for all those who are already married and brothers and sisters and all that. So there's a message for them. You can't change your mind. And all. But there were one or two tips that can help you. If you already, uh, lift your hand and pray for the mercies and the grace of God. Father, we thank you for your mercies and your grace. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you thanks. We give you praise. Haramandala bashandala bakamandala nadala lavanande. Halaraban beledindo ramande ledindo ramande ledindo ramande ledindo ramande. Ere malam balala mana shande ledindo ke mandala la balala bi. Balam 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 balam. Oh yes, yes. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you praise. Lord, we thank you for your word today. We pray for your mercies and your great help for our lives. Oh, have mercy on us, Lord. Give us the spirit of wisdom, spirit of knowledge, spirit of understanding, spirit of counsel, spirit of justice, spirit of discretion, spirit of the fear of the Lord, spirit of love. We pray for the spirit of humility. Cause us to be humble, full of love, truth, holiness. We pray for your grace to help us in our challenges, our difficulties, our problems. Father, we have so many problems in life. Help us to survive. Help us to do well. We pray. Lift your hand. Pray for the Holy Spirit. Lord, give us the spirit of discretion. Spirit of God. Spirit of the fear of God. Spirit of wisdom. Spirit of knowledge. Let us, have, let us know what we don't know. No things that are, are hidden to us, Lord. Palenkama, Semenkala, Nomushanka, Shinkala, Masoko, Tanda, Baba. In the name of Jesus, we worship you as we pray for the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of truth, the Spirit of revelation, the Spirit of wisdom, the Spirit that brings dreams, visions. Machile, Matsan, Simpala, Mintetilana, Suntitado, Tintelama, Samintolum Sita Tindo Colambo, Tilon Sinkitalon, Kusinko Tatamba, the Shida Sele. In Jesus' name, we praise you, Lord. Let your hand and thank God that He has heard your prayer. Father, thank you for filling us, guiding us, blessing us with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit from heaven our great helper, our lover. We worship you, Father. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated.
Just a moment before you sit down. Close your eyes. If you are here, not born again, I want to give your life to Jesus. Raise your right hand. I pray with you. Pastor, I want to give my life to God. Just lift your right hand. I want to pray with you as we close. God bless you. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you've lifted your hand, lift it high above your head so I can see. God bless you. Father, thank you for your great blessing tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Right, right, right. I want us to give a good offering as we close tonight. Amen. How many are blessed with the word of God? We must give a good offering tonight. Amen. Take out an offering to support Healing Jesus. Our next crusade is in Salaga, in the north of Ghana. The people are already there. They are preparing. And way up in the Islamic stronghold, we are going. A lot of people are working all the time to make it real. Let us give a good offering to support it. In Jesus' name, amen. Lift it up high. Father, we are thanking you. We are praising you for this powerful offering that we are giving to honor your work and to help your work. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. I shall receive the offering quickly. Where is she? Uh, same song again. Right. I feel it's time to be found. Professor. Amen. I said it's time to be found. Professor. Shh, quiet, please. And hello, please, please, please listen to what I'm sharing with you. Now, marriage is like um, something that is supposed to make you happy or fill in a gap for something you don't have. But for many people, is their number one um, problem. Now, I just want us to pray concerning marriage for all of us, whether you are married, not married, wanting to be married, or you don't even want to be married. Whatever. Now, marriage is not as simple as uh, it looks because there are some abnormalities and some unusual things that are happening all the time. Number one, God is the one who really chooses somebody for you. If we go back to the original marriage between Adam and Eve, it's God who chose Eve for Adam. Not Adam who went to find, choose Eve. Yeah. God chose Eve for Adam. Then number two, it is God who knew that Adam needed a wife. Even Adam didn't know that he needed somebody. Yes, Adam did. Adam was cool, like he was in the garden. Was there a problem? Yeah. So Adam didn't know that he needed somebody. But God knew. So God knows what you need. Then, God knew what would suit Adam. So he said, I'm going to make him a help meet or meet is suitable. Because not everybody is suitable for everybody. <laughs> so when you get an unsuitable, that word meat 
help meet. The word meet. I'll make him a help meet. Oh, is that what it says? American, suitable. Yes. Put an American Bible there. I'll make him a helper suitable. Not every girl is suitable for you. Yes. And because we are just about to pray, and I want us to pray well. For those, even those who are married, those who are not married. Not everybody is suitable. There are some unsuitable marriages. They don't suit each other. So it's what we call an IMC, an ill married couple. Ill married, like the marriage was not a good arrangement. And whenever you are in an ill married situation that is not yet married, you must break up. When you are in a relationship and you are quarreling, it's a sign to break up in the relationship. If you keep quarreling in a relationship and you go ahead and marry, you are a fool, usually. A fool in the sense that you can't see that this thing, it's hopeless. You haven't even started to marry. And it's endless quarrels and always unhappy. I mean, your foolishness is not clear to you, but you, to be clear later. Because it's a seesaw. What you see is what you saw. Work it, work it. Yeah. But you know, so it's something God is doing in this prophetic moment now. God is finding people. That is if you trust him. If you trust him, he will give you, he knows what you need. I've been married for, I've, I've known my wife, I've been in a relationship for 32 years. Yeah. I mean, what I know now is not what I knew 32 years ago. I mean, 32 years is a long time of being in a relationship or committed to one person. So obviously what I know now is different from what I knew 32, 30 years ago. And what I think now is different from how, what I thought then. You don't know. So really, you, you actually need God to really help you to choose. You, you can't know. That's what I think. You can't know. That's why the pastors, if you people had faith, we would be... But anyway, what I'm doing now is helping you to not go into an unsuitable marriage. If you listen to what I'm saying, I don't need to sit with you personally. To, I've told you already. You, you know. This leads to this. And never follow the tears. If you have to break up, don't, don't follow them. When the people are crying, no, they will cry more when you marry. Uh, the, the tears will be times thousand. The tears will be more. You will wish, you say that we should have cried the small one and let your life go on than to take on somebody and let the person cry. Yes. There are two types of good looking marriages. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> two types. There are those that are good and also good looking. And there are those that are bad and good looking. Yes. Many people have, have, everybody's divided into these two. Yeah. So, but it is deceptive because the good looking, because you see, apart from everything in society, people like to have a good impression. So, so even the bad try to look good. Even if it's not good, it's like, Charlie, let's look good. Let's take a picture. Let's kiss in public and take a picture. Ah, 
See, we like we like each other. You see that we are in love. Uh, something for the cameras. Let's hold hands and let's be stroking ourselves gently in public so that. Yes. You make a dress and I'll make a tie out of the material that you used to make. Yeah. The material that you used to make your dress, I'll make a tie. And I'll wear the tie when you wear your dress. Yeah. So, I sense in my spirit that God is going to bring you or choose you. Now, the play that we watch today, I don't know if you have a video of it, but it's an important drama for every young lady. Because the sister was advised, she was advised, say yes to everything and flow. As soon as the boy, that, that's where the curse starts to come in. As soon as a good brother came to her and started to say something good, she reacted. We were all shocked here. I was sitting there, I said, oh. <laughs> Why? What's wrong with the girl? She's about to be blessed and she's spoiling her life. She's actually spoiling her life Practically, in front of everybody. <laughs> it will never happen to you in I Jesus' name. Do you know that the advice, simple advice of say yes, flow, it looks almost like too simple. You can't, understand, you can't imagine how, if you marry and you have in your, in your mind, say yes. And say sorry, genuinely, almost everything. Learn to say yes and to say sorry. You'll be surprised. These two words will be like magic wand to, you, to your life. To say yes and to say sorry. Oh. Kayla Basha. I receive it. So God is about to choose somebody for you. Professor. Now, there are some realities that are very difficult to relate with, but they are real. That's number one. God knows what you need. You don't know. Most of us young men we want sex. It's the main thing we are after. But we don't know what we really need. As for the sex, you know it. But after the sex, you, you don't know what other things you've got. The sex is five minutes. Remainder 23 hours and 55 minutes. What is going to happen in the 23 hours and 55 minutes after? That is the part you have not thought about. But your, your need for sex has blinded you to those 23 hours, 55 minutes left. Kabasha. I receive it. I receive it. Are you listening? Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. So, the other thing is that what you need changes with time. That's the other thing. So, what you need today, like what do you need today? When you were born, you needed pampers and little small dresses and toys and dolls. Now, what you need is different. So, as you grow through life, what you need changes. So sometimes you may have somebody who supplies your need at stage, this stage, then later it's not working because the stage has changed. And that person was good for 
this one, but not good for all or for some. Yes. So that's why God has to choose. And I see him choosing. I receive it. Then the other thing is that when God designed marriage, we were all perfect in Genesis chapter 2. We fell in chapter 3. And marriage was in, introduced in chapter 2. And we fell in chapter 3. Yes, one and then by three we were, we were gone. So, it is intended for two good cars to drive on the motorway together. Like this. But now, one has had an accident and one has an engine problem. And they are both supposed to go together on the motorway. You see that it's not going to be so easy to stay together. And then, nature rarely has one male animal with one female. And in the Bible, we are taught about things that nature teaches. It says, that not nature itself teach you. This is one of the things we used to teach about homosexuality. That no male animal has sex with a fellow male. Lizard, snake, dog, cat, leopard, lion, giraffe, guitar, giraffe, horse, bull, cow, baboon, nobody. And we, we use this scripture, does not even nature itself teach you. So we see nature teaches us things. And in the same way, nature shows it's only some birds who have one partner. But no, two rare beds. <laughs> Very rare bed. Uh, so you are already entering, when you enter into marriage, you are entering into something that is somehow against nature. Yes. Somehow against your nature. But you not know. You may discard what I'm saying. You may take that what I'm saying is just, but I'm showing you something in, in the Bible. You may not like to listen to what I'm saying, but I'm showing you. So that means that you are going to have to almost fight against nature. Yes. Another thing in nature, you see that the animals, when they are having sex, it's to give birth. So in nature, you find that when they are finished giving birth, they don't do these things. She's not on heat and it's an old chicken that is not laying eggs. It's an old layer. Also nature. So for the woman, something that you finish the usefulness of bringing forth my one, two, three are finished. That's nature. But now to be the entertainment object for somebody for more years. And you should check on the internet how often people have sex. You see, in their 20s, their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, you would think it would be reducing, but surprisingly when you check the internet i won't tell you the figures you can check it yourself it's not everything i have to tell you as a student you must go and do your own research <laughs> so there's a lot of against nature things that we get into when we marry that's why older people are sometimes not as excited about the marriages as the younger ones are so just wow so both of you are going against nature but i believe today how many believe what i'm saying god is choosing for you yes sir. somebody suitable i receive and all those who are already in 
I see grace Professor. being given to you Amen. to do well in it. I receive. Stand up, everybody. Now, every girl here, huh? all the sisters, you see, you are so many. That's why you must be humble when you marry. It's not a small thing to get a beloved. Huh? It's amazing that you have a people becoming proud when they get married. Ah. Anyway, we are going to pray. So, first lovers, you are being found. I say you are being what? Found and you are also finding. I will see. Let your hand begin to. Faith is to create what you believe in. Now, you see this campus? It is created based on my beliefs. My beliefs have made me build this campus. You see, you, you, yes. You see the garden, the gardens. Yes, the gardens, the prayer gardens, my beliefs in praying for hours in gardens. That's why we, you, you cannot imagine how much it costs to, to make the garden. It's, it's expanded and getting bigger. It costs a lot of money. It's my beliefs. My beliefs in a place to pray. Not, not anything else. That's my beliefs. Your beliefs create things in your life. Yes. So when you have a belief and you have a faith, you go about creating. So if you believe in a good marriage, and I teach you, I, I suggest to you, and I say to you, learn how to swim. I say to you, honeymoon. I say to you, say yes. Say sorry. Flow like this. Behave this way. Do this. You see, you are being given words with which you can create a certain level of happiness. Which... We all aspire to. Yes. I don't know if we all aspire to, but some aspire to. Are you aspiring to that? Yeah. So Abraham and Sarah set about to create the many nations. So they were, you should have seen Abraham having sex with Sarah. Hey! Old man, pa, look at what you are doing. Chale! Chapping, moving, say Abraham. Yeah. The energy he was using reveals the faith that he had, his belief. No, no. So you must go back and create what you believe. God is giving you ideas, tips, words. He says the word preached did not benefit them. Because they did not mix it with faith and they did not have actions that create the things they believe in. I believe that my wife and I should be in full time ministry. Yes, I believe it. That is why I created the, the school which she has worked in and worked through for many years. I believe in it. I believe the whole family. I saw it in Tulsa. Whole family, let's all work for God. Whole family, let's work for Jesus. I created, this, I created institutions and things that give opportunity for people to be in the ministry rather than working in the secular field. Yes. What my belief make me create things. That's why I've not, I've not built a secular university and war betides anyone who tries to turn this place into a secondary, uh, uni uh, uh, secular place. 
There's nothing secular. It's, it's a spiritual campus. It's not, there's, there's no secular. If you want secular education, just down the hill here, we have the University of Ghana. Very good school. I went there. <laughs> Very good school. <laughs> so start taking steps towards what you believe in. Amen. Your belief will create a life. And what you believe in, you take steps to move. And sometimes somebody will see you doing something. Say, what are you doing? It's based on what I believe. What I believe is making me do this thing. And it's creating something that I believe in. We built, we are building a hospital. We built a hospital. We are building another one for handicapped, for blind, for deaf, for people who are... No, no, I'm, t- I'm preaching. It's not clapping. Don't clap, don't clap. It's for people who have amputated legs. Because God showed me that there are people, nobody likes them, nobody cares for them, nobody has compassion, nobody thinks about what they are experiencing. And Jesus said, I was sick, I was hungry, I was naked, I was like this. Who didn't remember me? And it's the love of God. So I'm creating it. Creating it. Creating what the belief I have. The belief in Matthew 25. The belief in Matthew 25. Make me do things that will cause this to come and this to come. And then this will be there. Yes. Oh yes. So when you are taking steps, it's What's what you be? So you believe you can be in food. That's why we build churches. You, you can be in this church and be in full time ministry. The church will be there. God, I was once asking Lord, so what is my pension? Say, pension, say your pension is the church. I don't have any Ghana social securities. I don't have all that. I don't have any what, pensions, security, insurance, nothing. Oh, I only have the church. the church, and I believe in the church very much. I believe in the church very much. I really believe in the church. You see, a time will come where you see that only the church in Lagos or Abuja, they can, only then they can look after me if I need it. Only, only just this one little church, they can take care of. If I need a car, if I need a petrol, if I need a corn to buy, I need chicken, the, the Abuja, they can just take care of everything. Abuja alone. Wow. No, I'm serious. So what you believe in, you create and you take steps. So you believe in ministry and a good ministry brother comes to propose to you and you say, it's too short. Sorry then, then I, I don't think you really believe in ministry because it's too short for you. What will the height of the person do for you when you are married to the person? What will the height? Let's be serious. What will the height of the person do? But rather when Mr. Za comes. Mr. Zizu Za. Mr. Zuguzigi. Zigiligi. And he comes waving his BMW car keys. Then you start to flow. So it shows that you don't really believe. You want to create for yourself a life of ministry. You may have to be humble and flow with whoever God has given. Brother. Will you marry me? You've got a song like that, isn't it? Sister, hmm? sister, sister, will you marry me? Hey. I may not have much, but I have a call of God. Oh, sister, sister, sister. I'm gonna be a man of God. Gonna be a man of God. 
somebody I'm creating what I believe yeah now if there are two girls that one is beauty X and another is beauty Y 
which of the two beauties will you go for? X or Y? Or beauty Z or Z? X, Y, Z. X is unknown. Y is also unknown. Z is also unknown. You have to look carefully at whether this one X, Y, or Z is going to be appropriate for what you believe in. So, this one may be a buxom majesty. This one may be a slim giraffe. This one may be a beauty queen. Whatever. If the bosom majesty is more flowing towards your belief, that's the one. It's not about whether it's a bosom majesty, slim giraffe, or beauty queen. Do they believe in the same thing? Do they believe in the same pastor? The same songs? Same teachings? Same word of God? Do they believe in the same way you believe it? Do they believe in the same way that you believe it? Or this one believes with mental assent and this one is staggering and this one is believing few things but doesn't believe the marriage things. You see the girl, she, she was telling you, come back, come back to you. She was telling you that I've been preaching now. You never see me so, this camp is about marriage. Never, you, I mean, you never, you have been with camp on marriage before? No, Bishop. Did I counsel you for three seconds in, the, in, the, in your marriage? Your... No, Bishop. No, she came for camp on attempt great things for God and what else? Ready at 20. Ready at 20. And what the else? island shall wait for thee. The island shall wait for thee. These are the type of messages she's been listening to. But you are hearing within it words and do the people who are you are trying to marry believe in the same words your husband was at red um, bags of seeds yes bag of seeds bag of seeds and what other camp uh, and I prayed for him and you prayed over him and you prayed about the wife that he would marry I prayed about his wife so you are the answer to the prayer Wow. I prophesied what? He's going to the Caribbean. I prophesied that he go to the Caribbean. He's going to the islands. You made him kneel down and you were sitting down and you prayed for him for about 15 minutes. I was sitting down. Yes. Yeah. Very long. Yeah. Long prayer. Still there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I prayed for him. I was sitting down. Yes. A whole track of prayers. Yes. And, and I was praying for you to come. Wow. Were, you, were you in the spirit? Were you unknown at that time? Yes, I was unknown. I was in the Birmingham church. I didn't even know him. I remember watching the camp and thinking, wow, that boy is blessed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't know him. Prayers were going on for you. You didn't know that it was your prayer. Wow. It's a wahoo. Wow. So you must believe the messages and create. Take steps to create. So amongst the preaching you hear, you see, here it comes. Pope, here it comes. Here it comes. I, I, Derek Prince, I can't forget it. I heard I do, it was in the night. You will obey me in big things. You will obey in small things. If you want to follow me, you will obey me in big things. You will obey me in small things, the little things. Yes. Yeah. You will obey me in big things. and It's very important. And you look at Abraham. The things God is telling him to do, it's almost like none of them was preaching 
I mean, the first two are having to do with sexual things, circumcision, and then what do you call it? Sex, whatever, in the middle of old age, and then murder of his son. This is serious, serious faith. So faith is really your actions and your life decisions and the steps you take. The things you are doing, they are the the expressions of your faith. I tell you. So do things that show your great beliefs, not clapping and saying amen. Most of you should go on missions. Most of you should go on missions. Yes, you should be on mission fields. And your marriages should be deep blue sea marriages. Blue Dominican marriages. I mean, blue sea marriage with white sand. Swimming, happy. Practically. Do you believe the message I'm preaching? If you believe what I'm saying, you will take the every aspect and you will not say, ah, it's today is, I'm, I'm trying to just learn about faith. Learn about faith and the other things we are saying, they are all the part of it. Because you can't have this without that. I mean, you are connected to all those aspects of your life. Everybody here has a feeling towards whatever is you are going to marry or relationship. As soon as we finish and we will, those things come to your mind and the realities of all those things are, they just start pinching you and blessing you, whatever it is, whether I pinch or a blessing. So I need us to be wild believers and goers and doers and actors of great actions. So let's take our pastor in uh, Jamaica. He's, he's a man of faith. You know, people used to call me, say, man, I, I really have faith. And I always laugh. Me, I have faith. I don't, I'm not a faith person. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I love Papa Hagen, but it's not something I say much of or do whatever. And I realize, no, it's not what I say. I say, I have faith. I have faith. I believe I, I have this. I have this. I have, I have hair. I have this. I have. No. It is your life steps. Uh, they are showing what you, you believe. Yes. It's showing what you believe. Really. Yeah. That's a man of faith. So all my missionaries, that's what my missionaries say. I am so tender hearted towards all my missionaries. If you want my soft spot, you got it there. Yes, I have this type of crying feeling. Soft the tears are coming just now. That's why when Richard died, it was something to me. Our little missionary. It's, 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 they, are, they are so great to me. They are great men of faith. It's, it's, there's nothing to do, even, even if there's no church or nothing, just that you even do it. All the people are saying, we are a man, they don't do nothing. And you see somebody get up and he's doing something. Ish. It, 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 it means so much. It's so different. And that's the Bible says that by faith they heard a good report. Yeah. It's a very great thing. Very great. That's why I pray for that. I say, Lord, like as they've gone, let it, it should work. It should work. It should work. It should work. I want them to believe more than writings, the writings that I've written, the messages I've preached. You know, sometimes I look at the messages I've preached, I say, look. If people like messages like how I like messages, they will go into the archive. Some of the camps, sometimes when we have come, I realize that I'm never saying these things. Anyway, I've not said it like this in this way. If you listen to the different camp, even this year, if you want I preach, be saviors of men. I've never preached it anywhere before. Make yourself saviors of men. I've never preached that, it that like that. I've never preached that before, actually. There or only there. And actually, after that, I wrote a book on it. But I preached it only in one place. Make yourself saviors of men. And on and on. Even what I'm preaching now, it's not often you hear me giving the reason why people are listening to message and it's not turning into anything. Yes. So there are revelations and greatness 
that must come out of the actions of your life. The life you are going through and what you are doing, it speaks a thousand times more than saying, I love you, Bishop, and here is an offering. Here is, you know. I mean, thank God. It's nice, you know. It's nice. But your actions, it's, it shouts for you. Are you with me? Yes. Your actions, they shout. They shout. So a man of faith is a man of wild events and actions that he has, steps he has taken. Yeah. You see, if I send you on a mission, you can't convince one person to come with you. You yourself don't believe in where you are going. But you've been able to wrap 17 girls to go into bed with them. You're able to take them from outside where they were wearing clothes into bed. But you can't take three people or two people to come with you to the mission. Oh. Something is lacking somewhere. Couldn't take anybody along with you. Let's go for the mission. Wow. wow. Tell somebody, I am creating what I believe step by step. I'm doing it step by step by step by step. I'm creating the world and the life that I believe in. Sit down. How many have a faith attitude? Faith attitude. Faith life. Things that only your faith is making you do. Yeah. If you don't have faith, you can't pay tithes. You have faith, you pay tithes. You can't give offerings. You can't do most of the things. All right. Now, we'll be going for lunch soon, but before we go for lunch, number five. Faith is to prepare for all that you believe is really going to happen. To fail to prepare is to show your lack of faith. Faith is to prepare for what you believe. Prepare for it. Yes, prepare. Genesis 25 verse 5. Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac, but to the sons of the concubines, which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away. From Isaac, his son, while he yet lived eastward and unto the east country. And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life, which he lived. Wow. Then Abraham gave up the ghost. He lived a hundred and three score and fifteen years. That's one hundred and no, yes, yeah, seventy-five years. And and Abraham gave up the ghosts in a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. Amen. Wow. Now, Genesis chapter 17. And God said to Abraham, verse 15, As for Sarah, Thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name, and I will bless her. 
and give thee a son of her also. And I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations, kings and people shall be of her. And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful. Verse 21, but my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this time next year. Amen. Amen. In a year's time, your life will be unrecognizable as a blessed life in the name of Jesus. Now, look at Genesis 17, verse 21. Genesis 17, verse 21. What does it say? But my covenant will I do what? Establish with who? Isaac. Look at Genesis 25, verse 5. 25, verse 5. And Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. He gave, yeah, Abraham had other children. He had other children. Other, many other children. But he gave everything to Isaac. And look, read on. Genesis, verse, continue, verse 6. But to the sons of the concubines, these were unrecognized wives. Polygamy is an old biblical custom. And it was, Jesus even never really, I mean, canceled it because he, he kept, people asked him questions, if this one dies and marries the brother and the brother dies and marries another one. All those brothers were already married people. They added on the wives to their wives. They added them to the house. He didn't say it was wrong. You know, but anyway, and we are following Abraham. So unto the sons of the concubines, which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac, his son, while he yet lived eastward and to the east country. But notice verse 5. Verse, verse 5. Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. Yeah. And remember from Genesis 17, uh, verse, verse before, verse 11, I believe. No, no, no. Um, 21. I, we just read it. My covenants. Genesis 17, 21. Yes. So God was telling him, look, it's Isaac. Yeah. So Isaac is the one. So he gave everything to Isaac. The others, he gave them gifts and said them, go, go far from my, I don't want any trouble when I'm dead. <laughs> he didn't share his things equally at all. Yes. Huh? So this is the preparation that when you have beliefs, you do things according to the beliefs that you have. Are you there or you are not there? Yes. You do things according to your beliefs. And you prepare. So if you know you're going to be a great man of God, you start preparing. Start purifying yourself of all chains, bondages, curses, entanglements, sins, and practical evils that are part of you that have attached themselves to you for some time. Purify yourself because without the foundation, what can the righteous do? Very little. 
you prepare, you marry early so that you avoid fornication. It's all well and good for you to be preaching about these things when you are tired. And you are no more having sexual desires. Then you are starting to shout at people who are fornicating. You prepare yourself. Bill Clinton went to Oxford University. He wanted to be the president. All those things count when you want to be a president. They went, when left America, went to Oxford. They do, they, they, they take such steps because of their future. Huh? President Akufuado? He went to Oxford. Went to Akufuado, went to Oxford. These are places you've got to go because in the university rankings, you know, Oxford is number one. So it's like you go there and it's like you are, you know, high pedigree. You are very intelligent. You are super normal. You are just, I mean, super intelligent and you are very, very great and you know everything. You get what I'm saying? That's why President Clinton went there. And he's preparing for what he believes in. And you live your life and do things according to what you believe in. You get what I'm saying? So you need to take steps according to your beliefs. You can't just waste your life away doing anything that you want to do. You let your education go according to your beliefs. I wanted to, I mean, I didn't know how I could ever be full-time. I just, uh, so I tried to do, to become a lecturer. I went, I decided to study parasitology so that I could be a lecturer because the parasitology lecturers were quite free. So I said, if I can be a lecturer, I'll be free most of the week. And then, I can be, yeah, no weekends. Then I can, I can be in the ministry. So that was what I was trying to do. And then, you know, I ended up going in directly. But I didn't know, I didn't know how. So what do you believe? You take the steps. You want to marry this girl just because she's from your hometown. What about if she's from your hometown but it's not suitable for ministry? Just because she's from your hometown. Huh? She does, I mean, she doesn't even come to church. She's visited once. You are, doesn't even flow with what we are saying. She says, your pastor, the church is too long. It's like this, it's like that, it's like that. It's okay. But you, you just want it because she's from your hometown. Ah, are you a tribalist? Are you a nationalist? Are you a racist? What are you? Why is it so important? Is God not important to you? So I marry when I'm 45. You marry when you're 45. You marry when you are 45. What are you going to do from now to 45? Fooling around everywhere. Twenty-five to fifty. And you are going to the last five years. Abraham, Genesis, he gave everything to Isaac. He said, this is the one God has told me. I will, I will not be here to see it. I believe it. Take this. Verse 16. These six things does the Lord hate. Seven are an abomination to him. Number one, a proud look. Don't look proud. Anybody who looks proud, your friends tell you you look proud, ask them, please, what am I doing that makes me look proud? The person say, the way you, you do your eye like this, it makes you look like you are not interested in what is being said. Because a look, not that you are proud. The look of pride is not is what God doesn't want. Not that he doesn't like pride. He doesn't like the proud look. Yes. So some of you who say, like you've raised your eyebrow. One day I met a sister and I said, how is your marriage? And she said, it's personal. I said, personal? Oh yeah? Personal. Yeah. 
in Wesley girls, they teach them to walk as if they are carrying books on their head. Uh, balance, uh, balance a book on my head. Let's see. But if you are flowing, say, oh, Charlie, ha! A book cannot stay on your head if you are flowing. But if you are not flowing, if you are not flowing, say, how are you? How are you over there? Glory to God. Thank you for your claps and your shouts. I appreciate it very much. But if you are flowing, you say, Charlie, my English very good. Oh. I see you flowing in Jesus' name. You will never have a proud look. And when you have a proud look, it prevents brothers from proposing to you. One day, a certain father, he told his daughter, I will not buy you this car. Because... When you drive by in the air condition, you, you may look too big. Not that you are big, but you look that nobody will propose to you. When the brothers even want to propose to you, they look and say, hey, this is a dear friend of mine. I can't even imagine her in the house. And I'll call and say, headmistress, say, yes. Whatever proud look is in you dies tonight in the name of Jesus. Number two, a lying tongue. God hates it. Amen. Hands that shed innocent blood. Murderers, abortions. A heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies. And he that soweth discord among brethren. Watch out, there are some people when they come into your life, your friends will change. You know there are some people, they are the cause of your friendships changing. Like when that person comes into your life, it's like your relationship with this person will spoil, your relationship with this person will spoil, like, it's, it's, it's like in, in beloved doses. If you get a beloved, and because of the beloved, you are now no more able to flow here. You are now no more able to be here. It's not a good beloved. I said, I said, what? It's not a good beloved. Ah. Also, one beloved that you've got now, it has meant that all discord has come among all brethren. Why? Oh, wait till man will see before. Ah. Small beloved doses, now you, the whole thing has changed into something. Is it supposed to spoil all our friendship and spoil all our happiness? The beloved those is supposed to rather enhance the flow. It's like your presence is making us flow more. Not to divide us. When, yeah, when I was in a relationship in uh, medical school, you know, I was just in my room, our block, after church, we're all students. My wife, my beloved, she will make sandwiches. Yes. Then, Bishop Saki, who was Brother T, and Bishop Eddie, who was, I think Eddie, it was Eddie. They will all come. And other members. And then they will eat. And I used to look at it and say, wow. She is bringing the people that are important closer rather than scattering them. Yes. Some of you, one beloved, those that we have entered with you, Charlie, brother, you yourself should see the signs that this one oh, is a bad sign, oh, it's a seesaw. What you will see is what you saw. Some beloveds are like markers in soccer. They've marked you. 
Like they, they don't have any game. You see, a marker is being told that Mark Roland, is that what they call it? Marking? Close marking? They don't have any aim in the game, oh, only to close mark. Where you go, I go. I stop whatever you are doing that is true, that I don't like. Beloved doses is not close marking. Beloved doses is love. I don't love somebody by close mark. Say, Where you are going, I will be there. I, I, hear, you are, I hear you are going, uh, uh, this is tomorrow, I'm coming there. I will be there. Uh, is it seven? I will be there by 6 30. Ah, you'll never be free. Once I'm here, you must. Once you are there, I must be there. You can never be there without me. Hey! hey. Ask your sister, are you a beloved or a marker? Are you a close marker? You are marking Roland, Rolando or Ronaldo, whatever his name is. Okay, 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 okay. My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. By what your mother says, if you know me, you will you remember, I will tell you things. My father said this. My mother said, Hallelujah. Yes. My mother has told, I have not said them. My mother told me certain things. Oh, you see how they build this? Not this, how? Do this like this. Not like that. Many things. Here. Yeah. It's not for me to say here, but if you listen, you hear. My father said this. Don't drive somebody's car. (laughs) I tell, try to say. My daddy said this. That is the only reason on earth that I'm doing this. My father said this. It's a good reason. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. When thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. Keep you, lead you, and talk with you. The words of your father, biological, spiritual, ministry, they will keep you. That means there are words. When you hear those words, it's protection. Or the cell is it's protection. It will talk with you. It's like it's going to be talking. You hear the word in your head all the time. It's talking to you. And it will lead you. Uh, receive guidance. What is what, receive guidance from the Holy Ghost to your father's that, light and commandment that they are giving to you? Yeah. Verse 24. For, for 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Reproofs. Some of you don't like it. Facing. And beasts. When there are beasts. When there is a beast. That is good. There are some people, if you say something, you will never see them again. (laughs) Recently, I talked to someone. I just said something. One, two, three. Then I saw that. The next time I saw the person, I saw that he was standing far away. If he sees me, he stands far away. Yeah. But reproofs are the way of life. The way of life. If you have not been faced... And there has not been a beast. You are not in life. Some of you, some of you don't have parents, so you don't know the way of life. You grew up without being faced, without being blasted, without being told this is wrong, this is right, this is what what. Yes, reproofs are the way of life. So you have not been tossable. Is is that the, is that the right word? Tossable. You have not been trained. You have not been chosen properly. Trained. Yeah. When it's a blasting noise, like, hey, this man, I'm afraid of him. This man, I'm afraid. You are a fool. That's what you are. You are a stupid fool. Hey, this man, this woman, I'm afraid of her. You are a stupid fool. You are afraid of this woman. Because of blasting, that is the way of life. Now you are, you tell people and you are rather spreading that, oh, I'm afraid of this woman. Hey, this woman is very dangerous. Hey, tell her what she, oh, hey, oh, you are a fool. I'm telling you, you are a fool. Reproofs are the way of life. And you know you need it. That, 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 that is why, that is why when people get married, you see that, they can't even speak again. See, their husband will be quiet. Call Bill and look over Joseph. Everything he answers, he said, Joseph answer. How is marriage? It's okay. 
You can't say that she's pregnant. Oh, it's Mary. Oh, Mary is fine. Oh, it's Mary. Oh, Mary is okay. You, you cannot even open your mouth to say that, Charlie. You cannot believe your pregnancy by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Bible says Joseph was a good man. He, he decided that he would not embarrass her. He said, I know she's pregnant from the Holy, says the Holy Spirit. When I ask her, I've asked her. I spent from Tuesday to Thursday asking who is the source of the pregnancy. She says, the Holy Ghost. So he decided that, Charlie, next week I'm going to see the parents. First of all, she's very stubborn. She doesn't answer questions. She's not open. She's denying the whole pregnancy. She says that it is the Holy Ghost. But he was a good man. He was a good man. And the chosen more that you didn't get, the training and the facing, the reproofs, the way of that you didn't get, that make you funny. Oh, yes. Some of you grew up smelling. When you talk about bathing, you don't want to bath. And you don't know that you are smelling. You know, there are some things I don't know. I think it's uh, the camera. Look at them looking at me here. <laughs> if I tell you, you see. You don't know. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. One day, a brother, you know, he was called, he was called, but he said, you know, why is your marriage, you are not able to do the things in the marriage. He said, you, 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 you don't understand. I, I, I can't, I can't, I, 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 to, to stammer, to, to, to say, he cannot, he, I, I, I cannot say certain things that he is saying. Hey. Oh, yes. I'm not trained. What could he not say? And he said it. So the commandment is a lamb. Don't, don't start saying things. Yeah. You know, it's the way of life. To keep thee from the evil woman. Yeah. Wow. From the flattery of the tongue of the strange woman. Always notice the emphasis on words. Sleep. God is emphasizing the word sleep. He's emphasizing the word strange when it comes to a woman. She must be known. No strangers. Keep thee from the words, the strange words. Wow, when you were singing. Ah. Ooh. It was too much. Too much. I could feel your voice in my throat. Now, shh, I'm ending in five minutes. Listen. Listen carefully. Last, these are the power points of a strange woman. Number one is her flattery, like a year wet. Raps. Number two, 25. Last, not after her beauty. She's beautiful. There's no question about it. And beauty. Is enhanced by demons. When there are demons in a beautiful woman, she's even more appealing to you. Yes. Yes. Shh. Listen, oh. Listen. When a beautiful woman has demons in her, she's even more beautiful. She strikes you. 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 One day I was preaching, I saw a person. And then I noticed, and I, then I looked again. I was in a foreign country, I didn't know who it was. And then I found out who it was. I said, aha, that's why I looked twice. Because she strikes you. She's not only you, it's everybody. And she has been striking a lot of people. She's a striker and has been struck many times. Last not, it didn't say last not after her ugliness. It didn't say last not after her ugliness. She's beautiful. She's beautiful. But you see, the Bible says, Oh, Babylon has become the habitation of devils because she has lived deliciously. When a girl has lived deliciously, and, she, and because of her fornications, there are more spirits in the person. 
So it's not the natural beauty only, but it's enhanced. Just like how the madman of Gadara had superhuman physical strength. The beauty is super beauty. It's like... Wow. Neither let her take thee with her eyelids. When she looks at you. People speak with their eyes. I know when somebody laughs me through the eyes. Oh yes. I can see I can see in people's eyes when they love me. I, I can see in many of your eyes that you love me. Yeah. I can see. But you see, because eyes have there's something the eyes you can't understand what is this coming from the eye. Neither let her take thee with her eyelids. Shabaya. Whatever is out to capture you through eyelids. I curse it today in the name of Jesus. <laughs> For by means of a horish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. By means of a horish woman, like she's not a whore, she's not a prostitute, she's horish. Like she's horrid. She's not a real a prostitute, but she's prostitutish. Bonnie is sleeper with this one and with this one and this one and this one. It's horrid. She's a lay prostitute. She's a volunteer prostitute. Horrid. Not a whore, a horrid woman. She's ish. Ay! You will never be taken by a horrid woman. And when, listen, and when you are taken, are you, are you listening to the message? When you are captured by a whorish woman, your life is turned into a piece of bread. What does it mean? What does, a piece, what does it mean when you are a piece of bread? A piece of bread means that somebody is going to take a knife and be cutting you slowly into small, small pieces. Killing you softly. And eating you piece by piece. Yes. So when you have been taken by someone, that is your life. That will not be your story. And the adulteress, she will hunt for the precious life. She's not after all people. No, precious lives. If there's a call on your life, expect a lot of women to like you. If you are called. Yes. If, if you are called. If you are a brother. And, oh, you will not let me preach again. I shouldn't preach. Okay, I'll close, I'll close. Then sit down and be quiet. The adulteress will hunt for the precious life. If you are called, a lot of girls will like you. And those girls are called hunters. She's hunting. <laughs> then, you see, when they are... I shouldn't preach again, you see. <laughs> when they are hunting, they stop, they go slowly. So sometimes when you meet them, they say, I'm standing there. Hello. <laughs> then you see, what do you think? Then they, they, made, they made a fast move. <laughs> you don't understand what is happening. They are hunting for you, my friend. This is what is happening. That's why at times they look cool, at times they look fast. Yes, you have a mixture. Yes. They are after all brothers, hold your zips quickly. Hold your zip. Hey. Hold it tight. And 
your belt. Fasten your, fasten your seat belt. Wow. But if you are not anointed, you will even struggle when you propose. You say, Hello. My name is Jack Toronto. Uh, I noticed you in the congregation. And the girl said, Yes. And I thought that I could be friends with you. <laughs> Listen, I'm busy. I'll call you back later. But when you are anointed, because of the anointing, the virgins do love thee. And you see that they are coming to you. And they are hunting for you. They are sniffing you out. Mm. Mm. It's not that you are handsome. It's the call. It's the precious life. It's a precious life. Yes. A precious life. They are searching you out. They are like cats. Pussy cats. Hunting. Then you put the claws. One stroke. Oof. Yes. It's the call of God that is calling, calling these people. Because you are anointed. Yeah. It's a great call. Once you are called, a lot of people, they, 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 the anointing, it makes you like you are a great something. Although you are just a man. Yeah. Brothers, look, let me mark Ebonoko. Don't don't think that you like girls. They like you. Pa, 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 pa. They, they really like you. Don't, don't think it the other way. Brothers, can I have a shout from the Lord? Okay, I'm closing. Can a man take fire into his bosom and his clothes not be burnt? Next time you are watching pornography, remember this verse, Proverbs 6, 27. Can a man take fire into his bosom and his clothes not be burnt? There are certain things that you do, you will be burnt to affect you. Can one walk on hot coals and his feet not be bent? Certain things you are doing, they are burning you. Yes. You can't easily. You can't easily. Yeah. <laughs> so many boys. So he that goeth to his neighbor's wife and whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he's hungry. But if he found, if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. <laughs> he shall give all the substance of his house. Now, verse 32 is one of the most important verses in the whole Bible. Whoso committed adultery with a woman lacketh self control. No. No. He lacketh what people don't realize is the real foundation for fornication and adultery, which is understanding. Yeah. Yeah. And you see, it, 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 it's, so, it's so deep that I cannot go into it in this service. Yes. But you can meditate on it. But it is a he that committed adultery lacks self control or lacks discipline or lacks um, uh, holiness or lacks uh, what? Willpower or lacks purity or lacks righteousness. He lacks understanding. Is it which is? Which is surprising. Like, what, 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 what understanding do you lack? Because after all, we are flowing with our feelings. 
we feel it and we are flowing. So what do you, what do you mean by the understanding? And this also shows you that developing a certain understanding is your master key to keeping you from fornication. Yeah. Yeah. Developing a certain understanding, not even willpower, is your master key. Because the one that does it lacks not willpower, self-control, holiness, purity, and all those things, but there's a certain way of thinking which if you think delivers you even from fornication. And I'll, exp- I'll give you just one key. If you look at sometimes people that are couples that are older, you see that they are all, they are staying together. Who, they are made handsome and beautiful. Brother handsome and sister beautiful, they are staying together. But you ask yourself that, if you ask them, when was the last time he says, oh, December. I mean, around December. Or maybe last year. Do you understand? And you wonder that, ah, Mrs. Beautiful and Madam, Mr. Handsome, how come they are not able to relate in that way? And you realize that it's because a certain thoughts have entered their minds and a certain way of thinking based on whatever they have experienced in life has entered, it has dried out the ability and the interest. Yes. That is why the Bible says that it is, it is a way of understanding that actually keeps you or it is the lack of a under, certain way of understanding things that makes you do certain things. Yeah. So I'll give that to you as home. Consider what I'm saying and I'll teach it in small groups, not on this camera that are watching me here. <laughs> wow. What do you think? Hmm. A wound and dishonor shall he get. His reproach shall not be wiped away. For jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom. Neither will he rest content. Though thou givest many gifts. Wow. Whatever is lacking in your wisdom box. Receive it today in Jesus' name. Genesis 24 verse 12. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show thee kindness to my master Abraham. Now, if God answered the prayer of Eliza, do you think God will answer your prayer? Yes. We are going to pray for the person you are supposed to marry. Yes. Listen. Verse 14. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say let down thy pitcher I pray thee that I may drink and she shall say drink and I will give thy camels drink also like the one I speak to And when I speak to her, she flows. And she even flows extra. Camila Amado Lamagaberia. Listen. I want you to see something very important. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed. There is somebody appointed for you. I receive it. By God. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. Kamala Basha Kabayana. Yes. 
and thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. There is somebody appointed by God for you and you and you under the sound of my voice. Now, an appointee must not get missing. I said an appointee must not get missing from our midst. Is it clear? How many want the person, he says, for thy servant. So if you are a servant here, God appoints people to, to you. How many servants of God are here today? Hey! Stand up. It's a prayer time. It's a short prayer time, but very important. During the mountain of the Lord. Some of you are going to interact with certain people. And always watch out for those who you ask for water, but they say, I will give your camel also water. Kama shaka bayandalaba. Yes. Whom you have appointed. No, I like that part. Whom thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. Wow. So there is somebody who is appointed for God's servant. So we are going to pray this. Listen, shh. In as much as people laugh, we are laughing and so on. But the number one thing that would affect you more than anything is who you marry. Who you marry is either the stable rock on which you stand or is the fire in which you stand. Kalema Adama Olomo Damariale. You never stand in fire till you die in Jesus' name. Now, when you are playing golf and there is a slope like this, shh, there's a slope like this, and you hit the ball this way, and it's the slope like this, the ball goes right, always. And if you are going up and you play, it goes left. When you play for some time, you, you'll find out. You, but if you were playing here, to have gone straight, but you just go on this loop. You see, where you are standing determines whether your life will be going right, left, up, down. Your life is going straight ahead in Jesus' name. Lift your hands and everybody just... Now, one of the um, very important things that you need to know about God is that marriage, marriage is actually a mystery. It's not what you think it is. Marriage, marriage is one of the greatest mysteries ever released among human beings, which human beings have not understood. In Ephesians chapter 5, before you go to the Jeremiah, in Ephesians chapter 5, it says in verse 32 or verse 31, for this cause a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh. Right? Now it says also that this is a great mystery. So marriage is a mystery. Right? What is the mystery? The mystery is marriage. Now whenever you see 
whenever you see a mystery or you say it's mysterious, it means there are things you don't know about it or it's not clear what it is, right? It's mysterious, okay? So whenever you find uh, a mystery, you are finding something mysterious, mystical, something shrouded in secrets and there are more things to explain and to understand about it and that is marriage marriage is a great mystery okay yes it's a great mystery now why is it a great mystery I don't know but that's what God wants alright now he says but I speak concerning Christ and the church. So, Christ and the church is the relationship between God and the church. It's the mysterious mystery that God is um, sharing about. Now, most of the dreams you have for marriage will not be realized. Yes. <laughs> because because marriage is a mystery and it's not really what you think it is. And it's not really intended to be what you think it is intended to be. Do you understand? I mean, it may sound funny to you, but you should watch some of the funny things that I seem to say. Maybe surprised that they are not so funny after all when you find out that how real they are. Okay. So, what it is is that, what it is is that, it's actually something else than what it looks to be. Hardly can you find a couple that have been married for some time who would not repeat the words of Solomon that vanity of vanities. All is vanity. Hardly would you find a couple who would be like, on it. no, but of course, people speak differently. People speak differently, depending on even what they see. Somebody will see people fighting and say, oh, they were playing. It depends on how people describe what they are experiencing. Yes. So you, 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 you have different types of couples describing their marriages. So when they describe it, you, you, you think, wow. I mean, this is fantastic. Then when you go into it, you find out it's just like yours. And it's like, you imagine something so fantastic when they spoke. Are you with me? So what I'm trying to say is that the mystery of marriage is that it's trying to describe the relationship between you and God. All the imaginations you have about marriage are actually uh, to reveal how you are to relate with God. Do you see? So, that's why it says, I, it's a great mystery and I speak about the Christ and the church. Like the dreams you have for marriage. The imaginations of love, of comfort, of restfulness, of satisfaction, of peace, of delight, of whatever. Pleasures. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. So, all these things are actually connected to your relationship with God. But it's difficult to believe that there is a God who wants to relate with you like that. In Isaiah 54, 
in Isaiah 54. Verse 4. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither shalt thou be confounded. For thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt not forget the shame of thy youth. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth. And thou shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood forevermore. Now, God is saying to you prophetically that some of the things you suffered as a child and as in growing up, he's going to help you to forget about it. And thou shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. Verse 5. For thy maker is thine husband. All right. Thy maker is thy husband. No. If thy maker is thy husband. This is the same Isaiah who said a virgin shall bring forth. And to us a child is born, a son is given. It's the same Isaiah who said by his stripes we are healed. Is in the same group of scripture. This is 54. 53 is by his stripes we are healed. And it's just the same thing. It's, 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 it's our real husband is God. And all of us are women to God. All of us are women. Yes. Well, if he's the husband, you must be the woman. So there is something in a woman, like a classical woman, or what we imagine is a woman, that is supposed to be in all of us towards God. So when you see a classic woman, do you see what you ideal, you I think of ideally is a woman, is how we should be ideally towards God. Somebody who listens, somebody who obeys, somebody who flows, somebody who does, pleases you, somebody who pleases you, makes you happy, somebody who's beautiful to you, somebody who's nice to you. These are all our imaginations. But in real life, you... Many, many, many people would say, you know, I remember one husband who said that, and I've heard many husbands say that, is like, the one who opposes me most is my wife. I've heard people say that. Even your parents, you'll find out that the greatest person with an alternative view is your spouse. That's an alternative way of doing the same thing. And those of you who are the spouses, you, you would realize that you are the chief. Maybe when I say opposer, you say, no, it's Satan. But let, let, unless it's alternative view, it's, it's easier for you to accept alternative view. Oh, what I'm saying is not true. Yeah. Pe- people may even be in re- a relationship in different countries on WhatsApp and they're arguing. Like, they're arguing about something that is happening. In another country. They are not even together. And the argument that is going on, you can't even believe it. That people can quarrel without even seeing each other. And then, all that you imagine that God should be, the husband should be, is really what God is. You see, providing, caring, loving, faithful, patient, understanding, forgiving, Everything that you, you, you want a man to be, the husband to be, is actually, so the mystery is that the man 
is a picture is supposed to be or is supposed to give you a revelation of how God is. Uh-huh. Do you get what I'm saying? And then the woman is supposed to give you a revelation of how we are supposed to be towards God. Because your maker is your husband, not your wife. Your maker is your husband. So that means that we are supposed to be his wife. Have you not heard that we are the bride of Christ? Uh So it means we are the sweet, flowing, beautiful, nice, holy, spotless. No, no one else, no, no one else can control you. Like when you, when, when there's some religions that promise a number of virgins when you die. Why, why a virgin? Because there is an imagination about a virgin that she doesn't know anything. She's innocent. What you tell her she will do. She's at your mercy. She's fresh. She's exciting. But in real life, it's not like that. In real life, in real life, you may be better off without a virgin. But the picture in the imagination of a virgin is to reveal how you are supposed to be towards God. Hallelujah. So, you, you must decide in this camp meeting to be a good wife Amen. to Jesus. Yeah. Will you accept his proposal? Yeah. Yes. That's why sometimes we sing love songs in, in church. And you, you see that it's not so out of place because the love, the imagination now that's why sometimes you see older people when they see young people very happy in love and beloved and they have ideal imaginations for each other. You get it? They just smile and they just they just look and say wow. Now think about all the things you desire and wish for in your spouse or beloved and you ask yourself why should you have all these things being as some way as you are you understand like I I want you to be like this like this and you how are you like what are you like you get what I'm saying yeah I want somebody who is like this Someone who's like this, you don't do this, you are not romantic, you are not like this, you are not this, you are, and you too, what are you? You also don't cook, you don't do this, you don't do you don't do so many things. You are not like so many things. All the ideal ideas we have, you are not like that too. So you see that you don't even deserve. So it's it's very important for us to go towards the mystery. Like, so what what the mystery? So the mystery is that. I'm speaking about Christ. It's Christ and the church. Love is about Christ and the church. So we need in the church to get stronger in our emotional and physical, spiritual devotion and attachment and love relationship with God. Amen. Because our maker is our husband. All of us are to be women. So I must look at a woman, especially my imagination of a woman. And God is saying, "Uh what what you are imagining, that's how I want you to be. You see, that's how I want you to be towards me. What you are thinking, that's how I want you to be. And when you are imagining, so I want my Beloved or my husband to be like this. Then you get it. Then God is showing you that that's how I am. That's how I am. That's how I will always be. All right. So decide from today that I'm going to be an emotionally attached Christian. And I'm not going to just be there. So I'm I'm a church member. I'm around. 
Oh yeah. Oh God, you are lucky that I came today. God, you are really lucky that I came for the camp. You know, I'm very busy. If you had a real beloved, would the beloved say you are lucky that I came? Now, why, why is it that marriages fail to attain um, that vision? Why is that? Shall I tell you why? Yes. Many people marry and they say, I hope it never changes. I hope my beloved never changes. You see? But you are part of this life and there are things you have to see even the most ideal things still you have certain things you have to go through certain things that will mature you now one of the reasons there are two things one is that God uh we fell in the garden of Eden. We fell. We fell badly into sin and corruption. So we are corrupted and sinful. So marriage is now two bad people meeting together. Do you understand? Including the girls. Because the girls look perfect. No, girls look beautiful. I mean, I just have to introduce you to any girl here and you say, oh, this is an angel. No, 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 no. At least that's how I feel when I look at the girls. Maybe I don't know how you feel. Even girls feel that girls are nice. Sometimes they look and say, oh, this girl is nice. And you can't even imagine anything negative. Even bad breath. You cannot imagine that. It can come from a girl. But you just have to be her roommate to know that. It's too bad. Some people don't have mosquitoes in their room because of the bad breath. Yes. It's more than insecticide. Now, this, so, so, so two sinful people, do you get it? How can a bad person give you the perfection that you are desiring? Not, not easy. Not easy. Not easy. And then number two is that the disappointments are to direct you towards the real thing. The real thing is our marriage to Christ. Yes. Now, if you don't have any disappointments, you will give yourself to it with all your mind and your heart. This is everything. You will sing the wrong songs. You will say, there is none like you. That song belongs to Jesus. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search for all eternity, James, and find there is like you. Hey! So, so God has to introduce and allow the reality to dawn on you. Yes. And when that dawns on you, you realize that I'm not getting what I imagine. Yeah, then where else? And you try another and another and another. By the time you've tried four, you start to become hardened. And when even a man raps, you say, look at, look at what he's saying. Look at it. Look at it. 
And when you see a beautiful girl come, you say, look at it, look at it. It's all fake, fake. Smiles and soft voice, it's all fake. There is nothing to, all these are just deceptions. Oh, surely. When you hear them speaking softly, they say, hello, 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 yes. Oh, no, so, oh, look at it, look at somebody. Sit down. One day, I looked at a picture, in fact, a number of them, of women being executed. Yes, by hanging. Yes, by hanging. They were hanging them. Many of them naked. Yes, they're executing them. And I realized that the people that were hanging them and executing them were not impressed by them. Do you understand? Like, no matter how beautiful it is, put on the rope and we hang you on the tree. Yes. Your beauty is not affecting us. No, 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 no. It's not working at all. Yes. They were executing them one after the other. Real executions, not uh, films. Yeah. I look and I say, wow, these people are not moved at all. Beautifully, who have done their hair? <laughs> see them, see them hanging. Yes. As what they really are. They, they, they had no compassion or feelings. Oh, why? Soldiers. Try to charm. say, no, you cannot charm us. You cannot charm us. So when you mature, <laughs> you see that you are no more charmed. Yes. You see that you are no more charmed. Yeah. Half of the evil in this world belongs to women and half to men. Oh, is it not male and female he made us? Yes. At least half. But you would have thought that 80% is with the men and just 20, 10% is with the women. So from today, I need you to see why. Because God wants us to have a certain flow with him. All right, now back to Jeremiah, which I originally told you. Have you found Jeremiah? Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, verse 1, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Huh? That says the Lord. That saith the Lord. I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth. The love of thine espousals. When thou wentest after me in the wilderness. In a land not, that was not sown. God said, I remember. So, the strength that we are to develop is the strength of loving God like a young, beautiful girl. And I tell you, the more you love God, the more God will meet your human dreams and imaginations for love. One day, a certain brother, he was talking to his wife and she wasn't listening to him. Do you see? So, 
the maid in the house one day after you know and this she was so stubborn and she had a maid and another maid and another maid the maid was very stubborn not obeying her not listening not I mean doing what she wants so the brother told me the maid is behaving he told me he told that the maid is behaving like you so that you will see how you are in the house do you understand she's behaving like you so that you see how you are in the house Uh so you may marry somebody and you'll be in a relationship and there is no feeling and God will be showing you this is how it is with no feelings this is how it is you don't have feelings for me like your serving me is very formal and very dry yes I want you to see what it's like to be with somebody who is flat flat feelings are flat if he doesn't initiate love there will be no love there are some of you who never raise your hands unless they say, can you all raise your hands? Yes. If it doesn't initiate, you will never raise your hands. <laughs> you too, you don't raise your hand unless they ask you to raise your hand. Shall we all lift up our hands and worship them? One day somebody came to our church and he told me, he said, you know, the way they have to ask people to lift up their hands, ask people to do that, it's not spontaneous. Years ago, Yes. He said, I wish the people would spontaneously worship God themselves without being told, shall we all lift up our hands? Shall we do this? Shall we clap? Shall we sing? Let's worship. Yeah. How is like, huh? To be a certain way, God will give you somebody to feel it. <laughs> help you understand how is some way not to be told I love you or to be told thank you thank you for marrying me and to take it for granted yeah you know one day I told Dr. Go we were at a crusade in a place called Takoradi no Cape Coast it was and we came out of our rooms and we were going and I said, Doctor, you don't appreciate God. I said, you are saved, but you don't appreciate God. What he has done for you. I said, to me, a young boy whose father is not there, his mother is not there, and you are drinking vodka, one bottle of vodka in a night, and able to go from club to club. And Christ has saved you. To me, yes, I know you go to church. and Because he was with me at the crusade. He was always with me. But I told him, I feel you don't appreciate it. Is, is that you told me clearly. And you were right. <laughs> you may think I only say nice things to people. I said, you don't really, to me, God has really loved. I don't feel you love him that much back. And if, huh? You were, I was surprised. I couldn't believe because I thought I loved God. But when I thought about it, after, after some time, I said, wow, it didn't take me a long time to enter full time. And, the, and there are some people who are married, they think they are good wives and they think they are good husbands. But it's painful to marry them. It's painful to marry them. Yes. The other day, a brother was telling me, my wife says to me, thank you for marrying me. Thank you for marrying me. Thank you for... And he said, I don't know why she's always saying, I said, hey, you don't know what you are experiencing. (laughs) (laughs) He said, I don't know 
why she's always saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. You see, I, there comes a time where people feel, no, if I've not married, I would have married this other one. If I was not, I would have married this one. A lot of people wanted to marry me. A lot of people wanted to marry me. It's when you meet the sisters who are not getting married. And then you see how humble they are and how they are prayerful. And you realize that it's a blessing. Most people don't appreciate. Don't appreciate. Yeah. So God will give you something to help you to recognize yourself. Yeah. One lady, her husband had died. She said her, her husband developed a brain tumor. A young man. And it affected his, of course, your headaches, sensations, and then they did everything they could do. But he was, it wasn't going. And it was getting worse. So he was dying. She told me that my husband lied when I'm passing, but he liked touching me. get for somebody to touch you. And you see, there are some people who get irritated that almost anything God wants to involve himself. Like, with every area of life, he's touching you. It's like, I'm here. I'm here. It's the touchy time. And you don't like it. Every little area, even sex crowd, they say God is in, in, in it. How can that be? Wow. But she said, she, when I was speaking to her, her husband had died and she had buried him and everything. But she told me that before he died, he was lying down in the bed for some time before he actually died. Because the doctor said there was nothing they could do. So sometimes it's better to die at home. If ever you have a choice, die at home. Don't die you know, in the wrong place, try fighting. Die like a lamb. Don't die like a pig. Because we are lambs. You understand? Not, not like a pig. Squealing, screaming, and whatever. Just if God is saying go, you go. Now, are you still around? She said before he died, she used to sit by him. She would do work in the house and she would come and sit by him. And he was lying down still. And she said, I was looking at his hand. She told me, not somebody, she told me, I was, I was, I was in Korea. She was sitting opposite. She said, I used to look at his hand. Wouldn't he lift his hand and touch me? Wouldn't he touch me? My hand was just there. So, God's involvement in everything. You may not like it till he shows you what it's like when he removes his involvement from the little areas of your life. So everything about marriage is a mysterious communication to you about you and God. Yeah. You and God. Yeah, everything. So he says, I remember you know, so your relationship with God from this camp prophetically from this camp onwards is going to be like, it says, I, I remember the the kindness of thy youth. Look, young people like God far more than older people. I can't lie to you. Anybody who comes to the first love church uh or preaches to the first love church, or even sits in the first love church, usually comments. I've been here for five hours. I didn't know that these five hours have gone by. Because when you love somebody, five hours have gone by. You don't know that five hours have gone by. You don't be checking the time. Kind of, it's time to close. Your speech is enough. 30 minutes. Can you stop talking? Sunday, somebody who has never been came there 
And he doesn't even normally go much to church. He said to me, you know, I enjoyed it. It was, it was good. Sweating. Hot. I said, it was good, eh? Yeah. Because there is something about love. Yeah. I don't have to stop preaching after 30 minutes, 35 minutes. I don't have to stop preaching after 35 minutes. It says, I remember the kindness of thy youth. So when you are going to serve God, you must serve God as a young lover. But you see, there are some young people who dress in a mature way. They look very mature. I mean, you see a young girl, she's wearing a cloth in a way. I mean, you think that Charlie, she's at 42. Hey. There are some girls who like that style. The people at the back, are you, are you, are you with us? Are they new? You are new. Sit down so that I can see. The, I can see them better. Wow. So God wants you to love Him like a young person. One day, I was looking for a certain man. And I knew his house. So I said, I'm going to his house. And the, the person said, you will not find him at his house. I said, where will I find him? He said, you'll find him and he showed me where. I said, well, what is there? He said, oh, there is a friend. And so what does this friend do? He said, the friend is the one who has bringing, bringing him small, small girls. Which make him happy. Is a supplier of small, small girls. Now, his wife is very strict and very hard. Hey! How many would like to stay with the headmistress all your life? Implementer of school rules. He said, that is where he gets small, small girls. They bring small, small girls. So, you see, he says, I remember the kindness of thy youth. So, God wants you to be a young lover. A young lover. You see, as I'm with you, do I, do I look, do I, do I sound old to you? Yeah. God wants you to love like a young person. Yes. When young people are in love. It's, it's nice. You, you will experience it. Amen. I remember thee. I remember thee. I remember thee. Many couples just have memories. Memories. At least it's something. Memory. Then the love of thine espousals. Espousals is like the time of marrying you. Most people have, I mean, wonderful times. Feelings, movements, noises, vibrations, sounds, happiness, joy. I mean, they hold hands until they are sweating. Their hands are sweating. somebody's hand and your hand began to sweat. Yeah. It's like you are holding hand and the hand is sweating. Yeah. 
So God wants you to hold his hand until you are sweating. Feeling for God. Amen. The love of thine espousals. Then, notice, this is Jeremiah. When thou wentest after me, you were coming after me. Not that I was looking for you. Huh? That's love. Oh. Thou wentest after me. You were coming for me. I mean, in our time, when, we, when, when I was 25 years old, a brother is the one who goes after the sister. I don't know if it is like that today. <laughs> Has it changed? Those at the back there, has it changed for them? So what happens now? The girls chase you. No, then they are cheap. If you are chasing a brother, you have cheapened yourself. Tell the nearest sister, no more cheap cheapness in the church. Now, shh. Listen. Are you listening, please? But when the love is established, it's a wonderful thing for the one who loves you. To go after you. Wow. wow. How many brothers would like the one you've told I love you to now be after you? It is a message for you to go after God. It's a message for you to go after God. Tell somebody, I'm going after God. And where are you going after God? He says, in the wilderness. Now, when you love somebody, where doesn't matter? Where doesn't matter? Where you are, what you have, uh, what you don't have. It doesn't matter. In the wilderness, Charlie, I'll be there. I'll be there. If you are there, I'll be there. Are you going? I will go. A, a girl who says, let me see the house you have rented. It's not a proper girl. Let me see your fridge. Let me see your car. In the wilderness, you say, I like you in the wilderness. In a land that was not sown, you went after me. Shh. How many brothers would like one day to be in your bed and suddenly you can feel somebody is after you in the bed? Brothers, brothers, I want to hear from the brothers. This is how God wants to feel. That he's sitting on his throne quietly and he can feel somebody searching for him early in the morning. Hey! But most of the time in real people's marriages I don't know what experience you have but many girls like sleeping more than the boys
If you have sisters, you will find out. You see, that is why all these things are not happening. Instead of somebody going after you, the person. Is you wonder that, ah, can such a sound come from a beautiful person? Hey! Scratching his legs. That's why nobody scratches your legs in the morning. Yes. Nobody is scratching your legs. You are, you are not scratching God's legs early in the morning. Look, we are really some way. Like in our relationship to God, we are really funny. And that's how marriages are. Yes. You would think that a virtuous woman will wake up early in the morning. Ideally, she would have been awake. But. People at work. remember how thou wentest after me. So, from this moment, you are prophetically turning into a lover of God. A strong lover of God. Strong lover of God. Yes. Strong lover of God. With feelings. story of a man in Ohio. He was working at a mortuary. And uh, one day he was arrested because he was discovered having sex with the dead bodies that were. So when he was taken to court, when he was taken to court, he confessed more than a hundred of them they bring them. He has sex with them. As he's there alone, he's locked the door and he has the dead bodies and he does his whatever. Now, shh. What is a, a dead body? The body is there. There is only that there is no, the body there is there. Because even, even an accident patient, the body, all the items are there. Yes. All the elements. But there is no life. There is no movement. There is no sound. There is no effort. So when you see people at the back sitting down there without any, without any movement, without any sound, do you see? When somebody is shouting, they feel it's making noise. Hey! Yeah, you are disturbing. Hey! It's amazing. Hey! If you go to a church of older people, there will be no noise. They say, oh, these people are very noisy, whatever. You we are very noisy. You are the cadaver, you say we are noisy. You are the cadaver, you say we are noisy. You are the dead person. You are the dead. That's why sometimes God gives cadavers to be living cadavers for your marriage. Yes. So that you see what it's like. Just the person is dead. Just, I mean, that's it. That's what the items, they are there, but there's no sound. 
there is no movement, there is no wriggling, there is no shrieking, there is no, there's no whispering, there's no scratching, there's no banging, there is no striking, there's no shouting, there are no sounds of joy, there are no praises, there's no thanksgiving. Oh no, 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 no. I tell you, God is happier. God is happier in a group where they are. I mean, they are banking, they are banking, they are. Now, shh. One day, shh. One day, a brother told me a story. He said that he went to a Caribbean island. Yes, I don't want to mention. And different people were staying in the different apartments. And there was a man who didn't stay there, but he used to come and go. And whenever he was going, everybody was looking at him. <laughs> yes. Shh, listen, I'm telling you, if you don't this night, you would have been hearing me pray. Binding devils for more than one hour. Different types of oppositions and accusations. Yes. So that, that man in the Caribbean island, everybody was afraid of him. When he walks out of the house, they believe him. What manner of man is it? He's able to cause such a staring. Banking. Hey! Sit down. Now, tell the person sitting next to you, if my banging and scratching is disturbing you, please, you need to join another church because, honestly... Now, verse 3. Israel was holiness unto the Lord and the first fruits of his increase. You see, he was complaining about the backsliding and he's saying that you were the first for me. You know, Israel was the first. It's an opportunity if you marry your first love. But not everybody has that opportunity. Sometimes you have to marry your 17th love. But first love means madness. You are in love for the first time. You really believe everything you imagine is going to happen. You really, really believe it. You really, really believe it. So God is saying that, you know, you were my first, my first fruits. Yeah, you're my first fruits. You know, when you are the second or the third or the fourth or the fifth, you are not so impressed. When you say, I love you, it's like, yeah. And you, you answer, you say, me too. Same here. I see. Oh, okay, okay. You can just add K. No, some people just say K. You don't even get the O to add to the K. How many want to be God's first special first fruits? Yes. Anything he says, you believe it. We go here, you believe it. Go here, you believe it. Where are you going? 
You don't walk like that when I'm standing here. Uh, where's the water? Somebody should. Uh, water, 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 water. Okay. All right. Are you happy that you've been pondered? Are you happy? You are not happy. Huh? You are happy. Okay. Okay. It's happy now. It's happy now. All right. Come to the side. Somebody should come and wipe the floor. Now. Settle down. What was I telling you? You want to be God's first love. His first, his best, his nicest, his sweetest, his everything. Do you want it? So, you know, I, I, I prophetically, perhaps the nicer you are to God, maybe the nicer is going to give you somebody as nice. Sit down. One of my daughters in the ministry was telling me when her father died, she went to the bedroom of her father and she saw a letter that she had written to him about maybe I think about two years or a year or two years before he died. She wrote to him. He kept the letter. You see, you children don't know how important it is for you to relate well with your fathers and mothers. No matter, no matter what they are. And this one wasn't even like some super, he had all the problems that we have. But she found the letter by his bedside. He was reading it all the time. You know, and she told me one of the things she said to her father was that because of the way you look after me. Now this was somebody who was not even a, like a believer. He said, because of the way you looked after me, I could understand God, how God is. That was one of the things he said. He said, you cared for me, you paid my school fees, you did this, you did that, you did whatever, and it helped me to be able to relate with God. Yeah. <laughs> so, you see, many of the relationships we have, that's why Jesus even said, don't call anybody father, because really, no one is really can be a father in a certain sense. We are all falling short of that. Hmm? So, how you relate, you know, how you want, all brothers want a woman to relate. Yeah. It, it, it is how God wants us to be. Yeah, that we are not. I mean, like worship. Worship? Where you worship God? All, all brothers want a girl who sees him as how powerful. She looks up to you. How great thou art. <laughs> but after some time, it's eyeball to eyeball. I say you say. I say you say. And I say again. Hey. Sisters, are you going to argue like that when you marry? Uh, marriages will not be nice. So you will not even be happy. Yeah. Some of you are already argumentative. You know. And sometimes that's why you are not getting beloved. Because when you talk to somebody, you never agree on anything. It's like you are already, the person can sense already like a powerful person who is too powerful for him. You need to be softer. You need to flow more. 
Yeah. You know, we have come to, uh, come to learn about God. But you always learn about other things that are part of learning about God. Worship. Worship. You must be joking in most of the marriages. Worship. Yes. I like you. I need you. I don't need you. Is the unspoken message by many. I don't need you. I don't need you. I've got my children. I've got my ring and I've got your photograph. I don't need you. And your name. I don't need you. It, it may not be said with words, but like, basically, I don't really need you. So, you see, I've got my salvation. I've got my Holy Ghost baptism. I've got my church and I've got my pastor. I don't need you, God. I don't need, I've got the main items. Is it not salvation that we needed? My name is in the book of life. I've got my Holy Ghost baptism. I speak in church. And then blood has washed me. My children are in church. I'm also in church. And thanks be to God. I don't need God more than this. It's over. I don't need more of God. All I want is more. God, God even laughs. So he said, all I want is more. All I want is more. <laughs> Not so. Now, our marriages are a poor picture of what it is supposed to be. Yes. And even continue. You see, now let's take it. The, I remember thee, the love of thy verse too. I remember thee, the love of thine spouses. It's like how to continue. So, because you cannot, and most people have a period of good happiness in God. Does it continue? A lot of people ask me, so how do you maintain your zeal? And all these years you seem to be saying, oh, I don't even zeal. Maintaining my zeal. I've never tried to maintain my zeal. Do you love him or not? Yes. But when you look at people in their relationships, you see that people can have good relationships at a point. But do they have those good relationships? After sometimes three months, they are coming for counseling. Hmm? And you shouldn't need counseling after three months. Because when you are in love, the love alone forces all the counseling to work. You don't need even to be advised. Are you there or you are leaving? So, back to Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 3 says, you are my first fruits. First fruits. Wow. First fruits. Hmm? Now, what's a first fruit? Let's talk about even sex. You see, sex is like table tennis. The first time you play, the ball goes out. But with time, you'll be playing it like that. You see that? Wow, it's like magic. It just works. Yes. Now, hello, 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 hello. Now, your first fruit is where you learn things. The first person is where you learn about life. I learn what is this? How do you do this? This complicated thing, how does it work? The first fruits. So when God is your, you are God's first fruit, you learn everything from God. It's like what God says. Like, I don't know anything about econo- uh, economics. I, maybe I know something now, but I don't know much. I've never studied it. But what I know, I learned it from God. You, you hardly find me talking about principles, economic principles, from an economics, I don't know all the words. <laughs> no. But economically, we are continuing and prevailing. Because 
God is my first fruit and I'm his first fruit or he is my first fruit. So I learn everything from him. I learn about life. I, I learn about marriage from him. Whatever I do and I practice in, in marriage and in my life, I, it's from the Bible. It's from God. Oh yeah. I have no, there's no human being who can say that he counseled me in, in, in marriage. Yeah. My wife and I, no, we had no counseling from anybody. I just go by the Bible. I read my Bible, read my Bible to my wife and say, this is what the Bible says, so this is what we should do. This is what the Bible says, so this is what we should do. This is what the Bible says, so this is what we should do. He's my, he's my, he's my, he's my teacher of what to be done. He's my teacher of what to be done. So when you are his first fruits and you accept him as your first fruit. he's the one who's going to teach you what to be done Amen. so we do this now okay now we do this now we do this now and if you are a good student wow you'll be good but now you have people who are taught and they don't do well so this thing that you have taught i don't know it's not working and you have people who are taught by god and they don't want to flow with what God has said. This thing you've taught me is not working. What you showed me is not working. So God is telling us today that he wants to be your first fruit. Where he will be the one to teach you about this life. You don't have to tell me what Plato says or what George Bush says or what Obama said or what Machiavelli or not any, any philosophy. What does God say? You see, my spiritual mother, Betty, she told me, she said, what you do always based on the Bible. She told me, anything you do, what does the Bible say? So when I didn't want to go to, when she, she didn't want me to go to the race course. I was going to the race course every Saturday. She said, I don't need to go to a race course. I, I shouldn't go. What am I going to do there and gambling and so on? So she brought a verse. First Thessalonians 5.22, abstain from all appearances of evil. Say that it appears, it's not even that it's evil, but an appearance of evil. Abstain from it. So she gave me a verse. That's the first verse I knew in the Bible from the NASB. <laughs> and, and after that, I found the Bible to be the first and best teacher about everything. Yes. And it's my teacher on prosperity. Yes. I've prospered far more than people who claim they are following certain ideals and principles. When the Bible says, don't borrow, that's all that I knew. It's, it's one of my number one principles, don't borrow. So as we are here, we don't owe anybody. Nobody, we don't, and so somebody's coming, a bank, Zenith, Fidelity, Echo Bank, Stanchard, Barclays, UT, there's, that, there's nothing, there's no agreement, there's no sign, nothing has been signed, there's no arrangement, there's no transactions, there's no exchanging cheaper debt for more expensive debt, <laughs> bringing, I mean, provisions, there's nothing. Nothing. That's real prosperity. He taught me real prosperity. Real prosperity. If I drive a car, it's a real car on the road. <laughs> Verse 5 or verse 4. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob. We are in Jeremiah chapter 2. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the children of Israel. What iniquities have your fathers found in me that they have gone far from me? So God is saying, don't go far from me. You know, because when you love, you are close. You are close. Think of you and your beloved staying in different houses. Some of you stay in Katkaswa, your beloved stays in Tema. The whole of our Christ between you and your beloved. From Kaswa to Tema. But when you are in love, 
you move from Kaswa, you move from Tema, and come and be in one room together. Hey! Somebody who always feels hot and somebody who always feels cold will be in one room. Is it not amazing? And you agree to feel hot while this person feels cold. Or you agree to feel cold while this person feels hot. Amazing. Huh? So when you are in love and you are zealously affected in love for God, you will see that you will not go far from God, but you come near to God. We say that, what have I done that you've gone far from me? What have I done that you've gone far from me? Don't go far from God. You know, one day a man came to see Jesus and he asked him a question and so on. And Jesus said, he is not far from the kingdom. So it means you can be far from the kingdom or near to the kingdom. So you can be far or near, nearer or further. So decide not to be far. What have I done that you've gone far? So decide to be close. Decide to be close. Come closer to me, we sing. Come closer to me. I just want to be where you are. So decide, God is my teacher. God is the one, just like your first love teaches you about sex. It's true. Especially if he's more experienced. He will say, okay, now step three. Now step four. This is what we do now. The next thing is this. And the next step is this. Then we are going to do this now. After that, we'll be doing this. If you are both not experienced, you you are experimenting together and discovering. Wow. Now, verse 6. Neither said they, where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt and led us through the wilderness? Hmm? Through a land of deserts and pits. Through a land of droughts. This is what God is doing for you. He's taking you out through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and pits, through a land of drought, through a land at the shadow of death, through a land that no man passed, where no man dwelt. And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. Look at verse 6. You don't even remember. This is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and pits, a land of drought, a land in the shadow of death. This is what God has done for you. Listen, all of us first lovers here, God has brought you out. You are a young person. When you are young, you are ready for all evil. Eh? (laughs) You you may not know. I was reading something. The man was saying that he he was saying that uh, men are adventurous. And there are even some men who cannot sleep with one woman twice. If they sleep with you twice, the first time, the second time, they cannot it cannot work. So they sleep with hundreds of ladies. So many of you girls, any girl, stand up. One, two, three, stand. You are just items for somebody to just use, use you, use you and go away, use you and go away. Stand up, use you and go away. Stand up, use you and go away. This is all. Now God has saved you. Maybe you don't know, but I'm telling you this is real life. You see, a boy doesn't need to be in love with you to sleep with you. Yeah. At all. It doesn't need to be in love with you to sleep. That's why they say, when you are married to somebody and he's having affairs, don't leave him. Because the people that he's sleeping with, he's not in love with them. He's just using them or he's just ejaculating into them. That's all. It's just, a, it's just an ejaculation. That's why they advise, yeah. You know, it's one of the worldly advice that don't, don't, don't eject. Don't run away. Because it's just something. He doesn't love them. But people don't know. 
You see, for a boy, chicken is chicken. Whether it's Daku Farms or whether it's imported or whether it's, I mean. You, you listen, 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 listen. You have to understand life. You have to understand the realities. Yes. And, and, and you see, I'm, shh, please, listen. No, don't just make noise. Yes. You see, if, let's say, you marry and then you, when your husband comes into them, you start making noise. <laughs> start and start banging the walls. Like, what are you doing? So, I heard in the church that you must make shout noise and, and bang. You, you don't do that. You get it? So, don't just shout all the time for nothing. Listen to what I'm saying. Shh. What was I saying? You, you, what was I saying? Chicken to a boy. Chicken is chicken. It, it's surprising. But there are many things that are surprising. It's not only the things you know that are correct. Many things you don't know, they are the realities. So God has taken you if you're a young girl. He's, pre- he's, prevent- or he's preventing you from just being used and reused and reused by multiple users. That's what it means that he has taken you out of the wilderness. Out of a land of deserts and pits. By the time you realize, well, so many people have used you and misused you. And boys, if you learn how to sleep with girls, every girl you see, you sleep with. You may not know. Shh. You may not know, but you are harming yourself because you lose the ability to stay with one woman. It's very, it will be very difficult for you. <laughs> yes. Because you are used to every female you see, you have to. Now, do you eat every chicken you see as you are driving by? Yes. But supposing every house you are by, so I smell you were eating chicken, so I came to your house to take one piece. Will a police not catch you at a point? You just enter somebody's room, somebody's house. I'm taking chicken. I'm taking chicken. I'm taking chicken. Shh. Listen. Christianity is far more than you know. Christianity does more for you than you can imagine. And he says, I'm taking you out of a land of deserts and pits. Sexually, morally, maritally, relationship. All sisters, take note because... Most of you, many of you, your life is about relationships. Your dream, although you are going to school, you, your dream to marry, to have a good relationship and so on. It is your dream of life. Yes. Let's not, I mean, don't, don't pretend to be super spiritual and so on. Listen, this is what your aim is. You, you may not accept it. Uh, Say so you are a church planter, you are this. I mean, thank God for all these nice things. But look, the realities are real. Uh, Financial tr- pits, many evils in this world, drugs, stealing, wickedness, theft, lying, prison. God is saving you. You may not know. Yes. Recently, I saw one brother. You know, at first, I, I thought loyalty was just to, to do with um, even the church. But I saw one brother whose disloyalty was so some way that after some years, not only did his church, his church turn against him, but his children. Yes. And the ch- his children said, I will not come to your church. Yeah. I will, I, if, you, if it is daddy who is preaching, I don't want to be in the church. You see, because the spirits that you are dabbling with, you may not know the effect of it. You know, so sometimes when God even leads you to be a faithful person, you know that it may be even not only for this, but also for your family. Many things you are being saved from. Yes, many things you are being saved from. So I, I, I know following Jesus has saved me from many things. Amen. Many things. Yes, many things. 
including poverty. You'll never be poor in Jesus' name. Sit down. Verse 7. And I brought, brought you into a plentiful country. I brought you where? Plentiful country. Amen. A plentiful country. Wow. Now, what is a plentiful country? This is God's plan for you. Hallelujah. I said, this is God's plan for you. Plentiful country. To eat the fruit thereof. Amazing. A plentiful country. A plentiful country. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. So there is a great advantage in being close to God. People that are close to me, they have advantages other people don't have. People that are close to me, they have advantages that people don't have. I cannot lie to you. When you are close to somebody, you will have benefits that others simply do not have. Yes. You will. Even unintended benefits. Yesterday I was with somebody and I was just chatting with the person. And by the time I finished uh, chatting with the person, I gave the person a, a plot of land at a good place. Yeah, I was just chatting with her. And he was remarking that, ah, me that I've come, I'm just walking here, I have no plan of what I said, yeah. There are many benefits of being close, which you don't even plan. Before I realize something has poured on you. Like the people who were near the guy who was being pondered, they get some of the water. So there are many advantages of being close to God. By being close to God, he has brought me to a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof. Hallelujah. And God has brought you to a place to bless you. And, and so he wants you, to, he wants you to flow with him. You know, like be close. That's why we, and, and being close to God is also being close to his servants. Yes. Because if you are, sometimes, sometimes you cannot be close to somebody unless you are close to somebody who knows somebody. Being close to God, to me, you know, I really want to see Jesus and I want his presence to be with me. I want him to be with me all the time. I feel very irritated when I pray for a long time and I don't feel the presence of God because I know what I feel, what I know when I feel the presence of God. I feel... I irritated is the best word. I feel like I've been bathing with my clothes on. It's like you've not really bathed. Do you understand? Yeah. So being close is a great thing. And all of us have been brought to this camp so that we would come closer and be nearer and more deeply in love with him. Yeah. And it's going to reflect in your marriage. You know, all you have to do is to listen to this message and you know how to behave in your marriage. Is it not true? You don't even need counseling again. You just have to listen to the message and it's like, this is it. This is it. Hallelujah. Are you excited about it? Now, verse 19. Thine own wickedness shall correct thee. And thy backslidings shall reprove thee. Hey. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God. Now, if you forsake your God, listen, your own wickedness will correct you. 
Yes. And your backslidings will reprove you. Backsliding away, sliding back from the high places that you are trying to achieve. Don't backslide. If you wanted to go on the mission, go on the mission. Don't slide backwards. If you want to be a missionary, don't slide back. Your backslide, sliding back will reprove you to rebuke you. Hey! Whatever God has placed in your heart, don't slide back. Slide forward. Your backsliding will reprove you. Yes. Your wickedness will correct you. Wickedness has a way of correcting you in a way that (sighs) yes. Your wickedness will correct you. Now, backsliding belongs to people who are high. That's when you can slide. So this uh, this is a message for those of you who, who, who feel you are high or like you are getting higher in God. Like you are moving up in God. There's something called sliding backwards. It's not, you see, there are messages for people who are down trying to come up and there are messages for those who are up warning them that you can slide backwards. Don't slide back. All of you sisters, I promise you, not from my promise, but from the Lord, God is going to give you something good. So there is no need to exchange God and slide back. If you are a sister in this church, let your beauty be spiritual. Take it from me. Take it from me. Your spiritual, your, your beauty should be inside. Don't slide back from that. Don't become this hair, makeup. You, your skin will even change with time. All the things you put on your face is affecting you. You grow older faster. And when, when you are seen one day without your makeup, you, 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 you. Uh, people will be surprised. Recently, a man of God met a woman of God on a plane. And he passed by her. Their houses are not more than maybe three kilometers apart. In the same city. But when he met her, because of the nature of the flight, I think the woman of God had not put on a number of things. Three things. Three things. One, she had not put on the stomach controller. Number two, she had not put on the hair. And then number three, she had not put on the face, the things that she put on the face. I don't know what they are, what they are called. Foundation, whatever, mascara, this, I don't know what it is called. But Three things. So, he passed by her on the plane. Came back to his seat. Went out again. For hours and hours. Then at a point he said to someone. "Ah, This person looks a little familiar. It was at the end of about seven hours. That he was able to realize that this spotted. This spotted face that he's seen. With the mighty overlapping stomach. Without the hair. Looking like a. a, a, a Hradium secondary school boy. Is this woman of God? Listen. Shh. Don't sit down. Don't emphasize. On outward. 
Just come as you are. Have your bath. Be clean. You are beautiful. And let the beauty come from within. When you speak, you see beauty. When we speak, we see softness. When we speak, we see spirituality. When you speak, we see holiness. When you speak, we see virtues. Oh. Have your bath and come. You'll be surprised. More brothers will be proposing to you than others. All these many artificial things. I'm not taking as far. You don't believe me, you see. You don't believe me. Eh? You don't believe what I'm saying. Eh? Brothers, you, is what I'm saying. Doctor. That's it. Everything you are saying is the case. When these things are a lot, we are, I mean, we are not even impressed. We want to see the real thing that we know that what we are seeing in town when we go home is the same thing. So, I mean, surprises is not something a man likes. So normally, even when you see a lady who is looking nice and you want to even beloved those hair, you have to give her water to wash her face first. <laughs> So now, when you are going to propose, you have to carry a pail like this. It means you are going for proposal. Hey! All right. Shh, sit down. Now, are you listening or you are, or you are, you are, you are, you are going somewhere? Don't backslide from your high visions. How many realize you are higher today than you were even last year? Raise your right hand spiritually. Uh-huh. So don't, don't come backwards. And sliding is like, shh, it just goes without stepping. You sort of just flow into it. Yeah. Don't backslide. He says, your backslidings will reprove you. You, you, You're changing. Your gradual changes backwards will correct, will will repute, slap you. Yeah. It's it's a message for those who are higher at a point. And, And many of us here are higher than we were last year. And God is saying that don't let your high aims slowly change. That's why I look at many parameters in my life to ask myself, am I backsliding? See, backsliding is something that is a road that is gentle. So, there's no signboard that says uh, backsliding uh, 202 kilometers ahead. Watch out. Fornication, five kilometers ahead. There's, There's nothing like that. It's a slide. Wickedness. 10 kilometers. Cruelty. Disloyalty. 2.5 kilometers to the left. There's nothing like that. You will have a high goal. Then gradually. You see, that's why it's, it's like, yes, as you are younger, you love God. You know, but as you get older, you must love him more. And in the new circumstances, more passion. Nothing should be able to change your God. Nothing should be able to change your God. Brothers, don't you want to marry somebody who is like how she is voluptuous looking? But is that what people have? After some time, you look and you say, eh? You know, one day, I went somewhere and somebody gave me a photograph. And told me this person is this person mentioned it. I said no. I said no, 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 no. No, 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 no.
Now, slim is nice and plump is also nice. If the plump is jolly plump. Jolly plump means you are fat and jolly. Jolly is pleasant, nice, sweet, motherly, friendly. It's called jolly plump. Plump and jolly. Very enjoyable. Jolly plump. You've not heard that word before. Jolly plump. Oh, then you were not at the last camp. Jolly plump. Now listen. Whether you are jolly plump or skinny spider. There is beauty in all that. What usually they do not want is a change in the nature. And the one day I was talking to a, a sister who felt her husband, and I said, Look, your husband doesn't notice many of the things you are worried about. What is noticed more is a backsliding in your attitude. When you see an older person, often they are grumpy. They are more stiff. They are not impressed. They do not even lift their head. If you, if you come in, <clears throat> when you were beloved or even you call, when you the person is watching the phone every moment to see whether you, you will call. Or that there will be a text. True or not true? But now a text comes and you reply the next day. Or in the evening. That's the backsliding. And the attitude. Shh. It's changed. It's different. Sliding gradually until it's a very grumpy. Mm. Mm. That's a sliding backwards. But your backsliding will reprove you. It will drive things away from you. That's why sometimes older ladies are more insecure when there are young, young girls around. Because the young, young girls are, oh, hello, oh, hello, my friend. And then that one will be, mm. Mm. This foolish girls. What, what, what do they do? Small, small girls. What do they do? What do they do? They don't respect anybody. They don't know when we came. True or not true? So all I'm saying, you see, can happen to you like you would imagine that is happening to you. Today you may be on this side, but tomorrow you'll be on the other side. And I'm showing you that it's a slide. You gradually change until you are not pleasant. And God is saying that your backsliding of any type, it rebukes you. Yes. That's why I, I, you know, not so long ago, I took my guitar. Remember my children were small and I went to the medical student's hostel. My children were, I don't know how old they were. Uh, Did I go with you? How old were you? About 10 or 11 or 12 years. I took my guitar and I went to Kolebu and I stood in front of the medical students hostel and I played and I sang and I preached. Yeah. I said, yes, that's what I've been doing. I'm not going backwards in my determination. You see, sometimes you have to look at certain things. How were you? What did you do? 
I said, I'll take my guitar. I took my, he's standing there. If I'm telling a lie, he can tell you. It's not that I was such a story. I've given birth and they were grown. And I said, come early in the morning. And I went to medical school. And I stood there and I played. Huh? Yes, Abishazaki took him along. Yeah. I played. And I preached. Yeah. <laughs> you see, backsliding is noted by symptoms. Your attitude has changed. Slightly. That's what I'm saying. Now, whether you're a skinny spider or jolly plum, both are nice. Yes. They both have advantages and disadvantages. Jolly plum has more to have and to hold. And skinny, skinny spider may fit into more beautiful dresses. So they are both uh, have advantages and disadvantages. Are you still around? But once you maintain the, 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 is the, is the attitude, the flow, the maintenance, because it cannot change. And it will rebuke you. <laughs> and when it comes to God's work, and loving God, the symptoms, you see that it's changed. This used to do this. It, you notice it's no more there. Notice it. That's why I say that I pray more now. More now than because I'm watching myself in prayer. I'm watching. <laughs> it's very important for me to watch because if I'm telling, I will not even know that some years ago I would pray like this, but now I don't pray like that. <laughs> yeah. Even the fact that I officiate weddings today, you see, is a very important symptom. Do you see that I'm not I'm not sliding. I'm there. This last Saturday I was there the whole day because it was two weddings. So waiting patiently. You know, I'm somebody who has so many things to do. I'm sitting there waiting for somebody to come and marry. You know, Fred Price, if you come late for the wedding, he'll, he'll leave. Where well, the pastor? Yeah. When you come, there'll, there'll be nobody there. If you are late, yes, he leaves. He'll leave. He, can, he cannot, he cannot uh, take it. If you are late, uh, he'll, he'll, he leaves. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, there are many things you have to now decide to start looking at in your life and ask yourself, is it dropping? Is it changing? So, you say you may be in school now. You may be praying. You may do this. You may do this. You may do this. You may do this. Uh, <laughs> but as you marry. So, when you marry, you must decide that everything I did as a single girl without a beloved, with the beloved, with whatever I used to come for camp, you know, would I come for a camp today? When they call for a prayer meeting, there is no work on earth that cannot get an excuse. If you have a running stomach this morning, you can be here. I mean, if you had a running stomach, will you not? Will you be going to? to will you go into work? So there's nothing like a job which cannot you cannot excuse yourself. There's nothing like that. You are backsliding. You are backsliding. Are you there or you are leaving? Yeah. Tell somebody, I don't want my backslidings to re- reprove me. Yeah. Sit down. Now, where are we? Verse what? 19. We are in Jeremiah chapter 2. Verse 21. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine. Holy a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? Huh? Listen. God is planting you as a noble vine. Take this prophecy seriously. You are going to be a very noble and important person. Trust me. You are going to turn into a very noble. Why? Why? He said, 
I planted you a right seed. Remember this Sunday I was talking about how to develop the seed of greatness. So he says, I planted you a holy right seed. A noble vine. Noble. I never thought I would ever meet any president or anybody like that. Yes. 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 I'll speak to them on the phone. I'll meet them. I'll talk to them. But you see, all this was in God's plan. If you listen carefully and if you follow it, you are a holy right seed and you can never imagine what will become of you as you go along. So, nobility. 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 You are planted as a noble seed. A noble seed, a right seed. Your destiny is very, very bright. Very, very bright. My mother in law is a teacher, and she says, You can never tell which of the children is going to be great. Do you think Rollins' teacher, when he was in school, knew that? This is the head of state. This man will rule Ghana for 20 years. Huh? This, this boy here is going to see the queen. This boy is going to be in the White House. This one. This half caste boy. Nobody. No father around. Mother, single mother. Moving, coming, not any, doing so well, whatever. You would never know. Yes. Fantastic. So that is why I'm, so, I'm, I'm like a school teacher talking to the children. It's like. Some of you may be first, you may even be a first lady. There's some people here will be first ladies, not one first lady, first ladies of something, first ladies. Yes. Of a nation. Yes. Noble. Some of you become millionaires. Yes. Some of you are going to be international ministers many many great things many many great things I don't want you to doubt it nobility noble noble I planted you a holy right seed so then he, then he surprises how are thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me. Goodness gracious. You know, during the Good Friday service, sit down. Somebody who had been in our church as far back as 19, um, 19, yeah, 1990s, came to the church. Now, this person's husband used to also be in our church and has not been in the church for more than 20, about 20 years. So, when she saw Bishop Sam, Bishop Pintefo, all the bishops, she wept. She said, my husband would have been one of these if he had been here, faithful. She wept. She said, I knew, I knew him. Because you didn't say Bishop Sam today, but he was Pastor Ishmael. He was, he was brother, brother Ishmael. I appointed him a pastor. He used to drive a beetle. A very old one with a lot of noise. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He used to live in one little room at Osu. I visited him in that room before. Yeah. She knew them. She said, my, this, my husband would have been one of all these this was his destiny. He said, I planted you a holy a right seed. How are then thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine? The description is even bad. Degenerate, uh, what? Degenerate plant of a strange vine. You will never be a degenerate plant of a strange vine in the name of Jesus.
You see, and you see, you should, you should sometimes see people who sometimes when you when you are in and you go out and you come like like, like this person's case, you are radically whatever. Or sometimes you go out and come and see the people. It's like ah, everybody's transformed to me. Yes. Yesterday I was I was discussing with Bishop Sam and uh, Bishop some of these bishops, Bishop Steve and so on, were discussing about building. Um, about 300 buildings that we wanted to build. Not one church. Not one, Not one church. church. Yes. You see, so he says, I planted thee a holy right. Bishop Sam was my follow-up director. Yes, follow-up. His, his main ministry was teachers and follow-up ministry. He was always in the church, the shepherd of teachers and follow-up ministry. He used to live at Osu and come to the church. Yeah. Come to church in his beetle. Bush. And then he was coming. So what I'm trying to say is that my follow-up and teachers, Dr. Go used also follow-up and teachers. You took over from him. He took over from Bishop Sam. Follow-up and teachers. I planted thee a holy right seed. Today he's invited. To different parts of the world to preach. He has not become a degenerate plant of a strange vine. In the English, that means weeds. It's not become a weed. How many are going to turn into a weed after all that has been said? What about those at the back there? Those check check whether the back the back benches are this side. The, those who are sitting down at the back, I think, are there some degenerate plants? Degenerate strange vines. No. No. Wow. Sit down. Are you listening to me? Yes. Yeah. Because the man of authority is actually the man who is under something. That's why he said, I am a man of authority. I am under. So in the time of my need, what I am under is what I depend on. I don't depend on myself. So that is why he said, that is why he said, um, the gods you've made for yourself, let them save you. Yes. So when the God you've made for yourself is yourself and your own life and you are not under anything, then you have to rise and save yourself. There are people whose lives are not a hundred times, a thousand times easier because they are under authority. If you say this, I, I thank God I don't have to think. You know, one day I told somebody to adopt a child. I've told a lot of people to adopt children. But I told somebody to adopt a child. Now, think about it. What will make you get up and go and adopt a child? I mean, you just get up and say, we are adopters. <laughs> of a human being. You must be joking. But just the word your father says to you, go and adopt a child. I'll even help you. Go, go here, get a baby. Suddenly your life is calm. You see, it is, there is a great advantage in having somebody even tell you what to do. I'm telling you, telling you, do this. Nobody knows who will not, may not be able to nat naturally give birth. You may have to give birth in another way. And to have somebody to say, hey, this, go this way, do this. What a blessing. But where you are to your own self, your man, you are the man of mans. Man of mans. Your life, you see, you have to save yourself. 
Uh-huh. It's not a small thing. It's not a small thing. Life is wild. That's why he says, where I thy gods that thou hast made thee, let them arise if they can save thee in thy time of thy trouble. So we are all making gods to ourselves. But in the time of trouble, that's when you see whether your God that you've made or what you've carved out for yourself is really powerful. Yes. Now, you can be in church and make your church powerful to you. Make your pastor a powerful point of reference. Make the Bible a powerful point of reference. You make your life easier, especially in the day of trouble. In the day of your trouble, you see that your life is easier. Yes. Where are thy gods that thou hast made thee? What you've made for yourself. Are you listening to me at the back? I say, what you make for yourself, huh? It's what you will have to depend on to save you when there's really something. And and the days of man are few but full of trouble. <laughs> Uh, it's not that I'm prophesying something bad, but it's, this is the world. Yeah. Yeah. So, there are people to whom I am even great. I'm great. So, I'm, my powers, I can use my powers. More easy, easy. It's easy to use my powers. There are places I step in and start taking decisions with effortless. I don't have to think whether what I'm saying or doing is acceptable. I just move. Do this, do this, do this, do this. Quick. Arrange. This is what we are doing next. This is the answer. This is the solution. This is what can happen now. This is the next step. What you make great is what is what you have to depend on. So you see, I'm saying to you, let God be great to you. Let the church be great to you. Let your pastor and your pastors be great to you. Let, let, let those things be great. Don't be a man of man's. You know? One time I saw a man of man's. <laughs> and his children were the rudest, rebellious children. You would ever want to bring birth, bring into this world, but nobody could intervene. Nobody could say anything because he was a man of man's on his own. No one can intervene. Yes, <laughs> yes, nobody can save him. Where are thy gods that thou hast made for thyself? Let them arise and save thee. If NPP is your God, let, let NPP arise and save thee. If NDC is your God, let NDC arise and save thee. Let's see how many years before NDC can come back. So it means your God is out of power for, uh, it's a very long time to have a God which is no more powerful. Ah. By all means, some of our Christians will have to do politics, but it should not be your God. God, God is God. God is called God. And no one must ever replace God. He's number one. He wants to teach you life. He wants you to be his virgin and his first and best. So he will teach you the different parts of your body. And show you, this is uh, called this. This is number three. And we use this for this. This is life. This is how it works. This is magic. This one is like magic. This one, when you touch it, it becomes magical. Wow. God wants to be your teacher of life. You are his first fruit of life. You are, you are his best child. You are, his, you, are, you are nothing before him. He's your, he's, your, he's, your, he's your everything. He's your master. Hallelujah, number one. Hallelujah, number two. Hallelujah, number three. Wow. 
Now, let's go on. Verse 32. Can a maid for or a girl forget her ornaments? Or a bride her attire. Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. Hallelujah. Can a maid forget her ornaments? Now, I, I, I don't see many ornaments here. But I'm sure some of you, your mothers have beat you to wear your earrings. Girls, is it not true? Huh? Did they, did they not beat you to wear your earrings? Ah, look at this girl. Stand up, let's see your earrings. Wow. Turn it this way and that way. Wow. Is it beautiful? beautiful. Now, can a maid forget her ornaments? Now, today, ornament is like also hair is an ornament. Now, if I start putting my hand on people's head and start looking. to do is to put my hand on the head. What is going to happen? Shh. You will become, excuse me to use the word, maybe, maybe even, even what? Ugly. Yes. Because some of you without this hair Honestly, it's a problem. It's a problem. Now, without God, you are, excuse me to say, if I can use the word, can I use the word? Ugly, 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 ugly. You know, fine. Without God, you know, fine at all. I mean, I can't imagine myself without God. I mean, what about me will make you come here? I will stand here all alone. All alone. Do you know any half cast boy who is preaching? As I'm preaching. Like you are rushing to listen to what the person is saying. So it must be that. It must be what the God part is the only part that is nice. Yeah. It must be. It must be. So when you set aside God. You become so unnice. That's why I'm saying to you, sisters, uh, if you want to be beautiful, beautiful, uh, attractive, just get deeper into the Lord. Like, and really obey the things he says. You never struggle to have a beloved. Your struggle will be which one to choose. And your struggle will be, your, listen, your struggle will be that, like, this one is proposed to you and you know that at, at least eight more are coming to propose to you and it's like you don't know whether you should say yes at the first or should, should you wait a bit. Do you believe what I'm saying? Do you believe what I'm saying? Tell the nearest person, I just found out that you are ugly without God. A 
Amazing. Is it not amazing? Sit down. God makes you beautiful. God makes you nice. Just as hair makes a girl beautiful. Now, even though we know that the hair is not there, Charlie, they still look nice. Oh. No, I mean, that's the reality. Like, we know that it's artificial, but you still look like, when we see you, it's like, oh, you look beautiful, man. You look beautiful, man. You look beautiful. Wow. I mean, we, we don't even think much that it's some a horse's hair or an animal's hair or a bonyo's hair or any kind of hair. We just say, you look nice. If I look at my wife, I would say that perhaps it is the fact that she has been a spiritual person. You know, that was actually one of the beautiful things. It makes you beautiful. Yes, it makes you beautiful. An empty head, you see, is not... A water head. It's difficult. <laughs> As the nearest sister, are you a water head? Are you an empty head? Can a maid forget her ornament? Not at all. So can you forget your... But he says, my people have forgotten me days without number. Days without number. They can go for days forgetting about God. Days. And that is why now in our gathering service, you see, we are really emphasizing on Sunday. You know, like Sunday is not just a service. It's not just a, a word. It's not just a sermon. It's a, it's, 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 it's a meeting. It's an encounter with God. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. It's an encounter with God. How many can feel it when you come? You can feel that something is happening there. Yes. It's different from other church services that we used to have. Yeah. So, you cannot go a week forgetting about God. No. No. You cannot. Every day, God must be remembered. I remember God every day. You know, sometimes if you hear me talking, you think I'm talking to somebody. Yeah, that's how I, I talk with God. You think I'm talking to somebody. All the time. When I'm bathing, when, I'm going to, when I enter the bathroom, when I sit down. I just say, well, thank you for this time of relaxation. Yes. I'm, I'm always talking to God. I'm conscious of him. Yes. I'm conscious of him. I cannot, I cannot, I, I feel that if I relax or if God gives me a time of happiness or small pieces, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's from God. I believe it. God makes you nice. God makes you nice. God makes you beautiful. Please, little one at the back, everywhere, listen carefully. God makes you nice. You cannot put aside your beauty. You cannot put aside your glory. What makes you glorious and wonderful? You have to keep God close. It's not something that somebody needs from you. What do I need from you? you I don't need anything from you. You need something from God. Yes need something. Yes. And, and this message is to help you to stay without sliding. Amen. Jeremiah 2 is about sliding backwards. It's about becoming a different thing from how you were planted. It's about 
falling from your sweet love. How you were nice when you were young. You should talk to older men and see how they, lo- how they long for the young love. They, they look back and they say, wow. Yes, they long for that. That's why people take a lot of pictures on their honeymoon. You should have seen Cadella on the Zambezi River. In the middle of hippo, hippos and crocodiles. Yes. I sent her there. I said, go. Go and go to the river. Yeah, go and see the honeymoon. Yes. Jeremiah 2, verse 3. He says, uh, verse 2. I remember. The kindness. Your voice was soft. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I love it. Love of thine espousals. How nice it was. And that's how God wants to remember us. And feel us every day. Like we like him. How thou wentest after me. He wants to feel us coming to him. Coming to him. Like you see like on Sundays and where we are closing. I met a, a man. He's over 50. On Sunday. He came to the church. He had not been there before. He we was there to the end in the heat. He said but you know I enjoyed it. You see because when you are in the midst of love. Even old people when they come and they see people happy at the wedding. They become happy too. It's like, oh. Uh, it's not a four keke. A four keke, that's all. I mean, it's nice. It's nice. Uh, it's nice to feel. Like, we are in the church. We came at 10. You know, it's 3 o'clock. We are, we, 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 the closing is almost like you feel bad that the service is closing. Hey. But there are places where it's like, it's time, you know. We have a meeting at 12, you know. We have to go. Wow. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Yeah. I, want to, I want us to pray one of the most serious prayers of your life. I want you to pray, Lord, touch my heart to love you and keep you close as my lover. I want to be. Do you remember at the beginning I told you that we are all supposed to be like women yes. to God, like flowing and happy and excited and near and wanting and desiring and submitted. I want you to pray that you will be like the woman in the marriage, a good woman, not I mean a bad woman, a good woman in the marriage. Close, happy, liking, loving God. Pray for yourself in a moment. Mamboro robo, balada, 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 balada